So she goes toward the control room with Donnie because Donnie does machines. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another riveting episode of TMNT Shellcast. Today, we're on episode 56, The Great Boldini, from season three, episode 38 of the 87 series. I'm your host for today, Chris, joined, as always, by my brothers. John, how are you today? I'm doing well. It's been a pretty good week i feel like the weather up here has actually been pretty nice it was sunny and like in the low 60s so that was that was pretty good i enjoyed that spring has sprung yes andrew how are we doing today are we sure it's not fifth winter though john just a little oh yeah which i went back to look at um as i was editing that whole post it's fucking phenomenal Whoever that guy was. So whenever I get around <laughs> to actually putting the episode show notes onto the last episode, um, I will enjoy that once again. But how am I? Good. I'm in a new place. So I went from Florida, was in Idaho, now in Texas. So here I am. Um, mm-hmm. No brisket yet. So that's been disappointing. But otherwise, it was a nice day. And um, not a the biggest fan of this episode. I'm just going to lay that out there right in the beginning. That's just how I feel. Chris, Chris's camera is a little pixelated and I'm in the dark with bad audio. So just everyone watch out. Yes. Well, we all know as I'm hosting, sucking up all the internet juice I can muster out of this terrible Wi-Fi that I have. But I honestly, Andrew, you said last episode, I might be pleasantly surprised by this one. I love this episode. I feel like it may have been custom it's built for me. Sucked. There are a lot of Yeah. Well, I know why Chris we'll save we'll save all the discussion, I think, for the episode, but it was there were some curveballs in there, so I enjoyed that. Um overall though, we're trucking along. It's episode fifty six. That's pretty big. Mm. Yeah. I don't it's know. A, I was great trying Baldini. to think of a famous fifty six. I don't know any famous fifty sixes. Maybe not. The Great Baldini reminds me of. Do you guys know what Spumoni is? Do you know Spumoni? Spumoni? Yeah, who is that? It's from Hey Arnold. Hey Arnold. The, yeah. Jeez. Jeez, Chris, what are you just repeating? <laughs> what was the song he sang? Um, you left my piece, my heart in pieces on the floor. Yeah. So, baby, why can't I break some things, break some of, yours? things of yours? Yeah. Oh, damn! I That's I knew the wrecking it ball. Familiar. Yeah. I oh, just yeah. I googled Spumoni because I'm like I remember this name somehow, but apparently it's a molded it dessert? gelato. Yeah, made yeah. with layers of different colors and flavors, usually containing candied fruits and nuts. Damn. So Dino knew what he was doing. But Spumoni. anyway, you're gonna say something about Boldini, John, or no? Where was that going? Just reminds me of Spumoni. Oh, okay. Well. Before we dive into this action-packed episode, I believe we had a pizza punishment for Andrew. The look in his eyes seems to be that he may have forgotten, but perhaps not. Yeah, No, definitely forgot. Had no idea. We usually have a little text that's like, hey, (laughs) what's the pizza? Uh, Didn't come through, so I legitimately forgot. Maybe I'll have to order it up while, uh, while we wait. Yes, or perhaps a cyber bite to come later. I honestly didn't remember. I asked John. I completely forgot about it, and then I mini panicked before you hopped on, Andrew, and I asked John who had the pizza this week, and thankfully it wasn't me. So, yeah, shame on Andrew. But I don't even remember what you shame were supposed on me. to eat. Bigger shame on John and Chris for just not even giving me a heads up. But uh, the cyber bites were I. I'm a fan of it, so maybe I'll drop one in there. Maybe not. We'll find out. But yeah, what was on the 
on the docket, I guess, is the real question. And that I can tell you. The other thing that always screws me up, I mentioned this last time as we were spinning. I never know when I'm actually in the pizza pole because I feel like when I win, I go back to defend myself. There's like, there needs to be four people or something or yeah. like a week off because you're constantly like in, in the, uh, <laughs> in the fluff. Well, when, yeah, you when you're win, eating pizza, I, when you eat pizza, it's a, you're in the spin zone, just you're in the abyss. <laughs> and when you're not eating pizza for a couple of weeks, I'm like, I'm, I'm walking on clouds over here. I can't remember the last pizza I ate. <laughs> yeah. Well, let me, I got this multi-factor login to my YouTube here. Dino uh, Spumoni. Yeah, he had another song too. I can't. I forget what it was though. All right, also, time. here we go. Do you remember the? I think Mister Mister Wang was like a country singer up on the roof. I don't remember that. Yeah, oh. I remember Pigeon oh. Boy. Pigeon well, Man. microwave pizza with pepperoni and no cheese. I was combo sliced. I have no microwave. That I'm aware of, so that might have to be cyber bite. So cyber bited in right now. Some might say I forgot my pizza punishment from the other week. Some might say that, but what have I prepared for you today is said microwave pizza, pepperoni pizza with no cheese. What did I do? I did a lunchable. So I took a stroll down to Walmart, got my pepperoni pizza lunchable, put it in the microwave for 20 seconds, let it cool off for a good 30. And here I go. This is a messy one. Single bite maybe, well, let's find out. Mm. Wow, better than I thought. But this is a $3.72 za. Thank you. But otherwise, wow. yeah, completely forgot. Shame on me. It was still a delicious pizza. But uh, yeah, and that's my score. Yeah. Wow. What a. I'm blown away, Andrew. Nice job on the yeah. pizza. Looked really great. Yeah. And here's the thing about microwave pizza. Okay. Very easy to overdo it or underdo it. Uh, what are your guys' thoughts on the glass of water? Are you familiar with, with the microwave? Have you indulged with pizza? John's nodding his head. Head over to YouTube where you could watch that cyberbite. Also, John's still nodding his head. And share, John. Share your opinion. Well, I, I've i done it for pizza, but I also do it for pasta as well. You put a little Whoa. glass in the microwave full of water and it just helps with the you know it gets a little, i think it gets a little steam action it's almost like a little oven in there yeah the theory is that our, this is just the one thing on youtube so the cup of water helps redirect moisture away from the pizza which can help it heat more evenly and lead to a crisper texture mm -hmm. is there the true science there i don't know but spoiler alert i didn't use that method in I did not use my that method in my as you just watched my pizza cyberbite. So I like the idea. I think it's extra work and that glass gets hot. So the hard part is actually getting that thing out of there. Do you have one of the is your microwave have the glass dish that spins? Yeah, which that doesn't do anything, right? Isn't that proven to do nothing? Wait, are there are options for microwaves that don't spin. I wouldn't mine, trust that. Mine, mine doesn't spin. John's like the bottom loader rack of a dishwasher and like uh yeah. this is like the drawer level, level, right? It's, wow, a drawer, it's yeah. crazy. I wouldn't trust it. If a microwave doesn't spin, I feel like my food's gonna explode. <laughs> it does feel very but, science experimenty. Yeah, I was just, well, I was gonna say before you said that, I was like, have they even made any technological advancements to a microwave since it first appeared? Because they all feel like they're the same. They advertise that you can cook a turkey in the in microwaves for Thanksgiving. That's crazy. <laughs> like put it in the microwave for three hours. 
You know what's funny too? <laughs> Speaking of microwaves, my wife still so she had like our parents' generation, right? The microwave was big for boomers, I feel like. And their parents. But she still thinks that microwaves, the actual technology itself, is the reason that like is the bad part of it. Instead of the microwaves leaching the plastic into the food you eat, therefore causing uh, mm. potentially cancer. So yeah. I don't know if you guys have thought about that, but that was a debate I had about it, I don't know, a few, handful of years ago when my oldest was first born because the statement, I don't want to microwave his food came up and then I had to yeah, have that discussion. So don't microwave plastic mm. is really what it boils down to. The problem is steamable veggies. It's all plastic, I, mean, I know. How can you how can you resist a steam bag of peas? I know. I get I got it. But that's in I mean, that's really what's giving us cancer. So yeah. I um I like to call it the micro wave, as there's a pretty popular English like T V cook that called it the micro wave. So that's what I call it now. Wow. Chef Mike, I like you. Good, got, yeah. I picked that up from you. Oh. Chef Mike makes me laugh. Chef, Chef Mike, Mike. Yeah. damn it, those are great. <laughs> well, next pizza, I will have it ready on the. I'll be Johnny on the spot, as they say in the in some places, it's like our house, and uh, <laughs> I will do that. But for now, my punishment is a cyber bite. We had the the trio, didn't we? Three in a row. Yeah. What and cyber bites going on? This one hit I should post this the to TikTok, the TikTok. Too. Yeah, that's what I was just about to say. This one's going to hit the TikTok, so let's see how it does. Nice. Well, Maybe Andrew gets some go viral. But Maybe Andrew will be Andrew will not be that cyber pizza bite next week. Yeah. Also, yeah, I'm a little nervous for this week's pizza poll, but we'll get there. First, we have to get through this episode, which again, a lot going on in this episode, but we start in the turtle lair, Mikey is dressed up as Michelangelo the Magnificent. And he has a top hat and this cape slash robe, with this blue robe thing going on. And he has two assistants with him. Zach the fifth turtle we, makes a reappearance here. My first pleasant surprise. And then some blonde girl next to him, whose name I believe is Caitlin. So he has two I assistants. Was- I was watching this episode and I I'm like, who the fuck are these kids? Who like, did I miss? Is this like out of order? Like what is going on here? And there's no explanation. Yeah. I thought they would have done the, like they did last episode with, or a couple ago with Leatherhead and Rat King where they like reintroduce them in some way. Zach hard to recognize without, his bandana and his turtle show and uh chris loves referencing what episode did it come from chris the fifth turtle episode 25 is that right i know it's the fifth turtle i forget the episode number <laughs> but yeah it's been a while uh, i was pleasantly surprised they're not our first su- surprise guest appearance of this episode yeah and i'll say i'm ashamed to admit i didn't recognize zach at first and I thought to myself, why are they saying Caitlin's name and not this boy who looks <laughs> just the boy version of her? They're like mirror, they mirror each other. But they're assisting Michelangelo the Magnificent in his famous rabbit out of the hat trick. And he goes to pull a rabbit out of his hat, he takes it off his head. But lo and behold, the rabbit is still sitting on top of his head, unbeknownst to him. And the other turtles, they have they crack a couple jokes. They have a good laugh about this. And then Zach's watch goes off, which when was the last time you heard a watch alarm go off? 1990. And he says, hey, we got to hurry up because the great Baldini show is about to start at the museum. And we have to get going if we want to make it in time. I mean, I will say back, you know, in the early 90s late 80s if you didn't catch something there weren't any replays you might never have a chance to like things weren't in syndication like you might never have a chance to see it again and how are you going to talk without your friends on like a tv so setting your watch 
very important. Isn't it crazy how much TV has changed just in our own lifetime? Like, yeah. TiVo wasn't a thing. Direct TV was just coming onto the scene. And now, like, if you're not streaming, you're doing it wrong. So pretty wild. Um, I'm with you, though. I, I'm with you, Chris. Caitlin, I don't remember. So I could have had that wrong. Because I'm like, who's Zach's girlfriend? And then number two about Caitlin is April's voice over for her is like some weird accent that she's trying to have, but doesn't. I don't know if you guys picked and up then on that. she loses oh. it in the second half yeah. of the episode just turns into mini April. Yeah. I didn't even catch any of that. This uh, Caitlin hasn't appeared, right? This to me I think this is the first appearance of her. I, I think so. I, I didn't I'll look it up while yeah. we're chatting, but I don't remember. Yeah, she seemed brand new. But she's there and she plays a major part in this episode. We continue. So, next scene, they're at the museum in April April's back to her old her old ways. She's reporting in front of the museum, and she's saying, tonight is the night that the Tortellini Emerald will be revealed, and the city's going to get their first glimpse at the great Boldini. So big, big event, big crowd. The Tortellini Emerald, what a name. <laughs> I know. It's like, what's the name of the diamond? Titanic diamond? The hope, the hope diamond, isn't that what it is? You yeah, know, the heart, the, hope the heart of the, the heart of the sea. ocean. Yeah, the yeah, heart, heart of, the, heart of ocean. the ocean. Yeah, I, I love when you have a gem that's big enough to have its own name. That's nice. Yeah, and I like emeralds. Emeralds don't get enough shine. Usually, you see like a diamond or something or a ruby. Credit to the emerald. But can you all name the birthstones? Yes, I can, John, because January is garnet, which is a maroon red color. Is it garnet? I think it's just garnet. Garnet played for the Timberwolves. Yeah, that's why it's the best. Number 21. Uh, outside of that, I couldn't <laughs> tell you. Diamonds are one. Emeralds are one. Diamond is April. Diamonds are April. Yeah, pearl I believe is one. Pearl is G. Sapphire. No, no, no. Gold. I don't think gold's not a gemstone. No, yeah. sapphire. That's September, I think. That's blue. Moonstone then there's is like June, the I believe. Am amethyst. That's going to be one. Turquoise. No. Who knows? There's there's probably a bunch of them, but we got our first segment slash. I'm going to call it the pasta power play. Hmm. So you'll have an opportunity here to earn some power ups, something that I feel like you guys have neglected the last couple episodes. It's so, actually false because I did do some, but I only gave away two. Wow. What the this. hell is this? Graphic. Thing? I just Googled it. I did not make this. Shout out to Google image search. But the way this is going to work, since we have the Tortellini Emerald and we all share some Italian heritage in this family, I am going to show you pictures of pasta. You must name the noodle slash pasta type. I would like the formal name. I will make some exceptions depending on what you say. But in total, there are eight pictures. So the way this is going to work, you can work as a team. If you get two correct, you'll get a respin. If you get four correct, you'll get a combo slice. If you get six correct, you will get a uh, party pizza. And if you get eight correct, you will get an odds maker. Whatever you don't get correct, so say you get two out of eight, I get a power up for what's left. So I get six, I will get a party pizza. Fuck is this? <laughs> the rules clear. All right, Chris, flipping the scripts. I, John, have you been? I feel like you've been training your whole life to do this. I, I hope. So, let's see. I hope. It's hard to so, you know remember the names of pasta when you're just slurping them down. So we'll see. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you don't have enough time to even see what it looks like as you're just shoving it in your mouth. And I will say in making this PowerPoint, a lot of the pastas are very, very similar, almost indistinguishable from each other. So I tried to pick ones that are unique. So we don't have that answer. If there are some that are close, I'll accept. Mm. I'll be lenient on the answers, but we will begin with the first one in the pasta power play. Or a kitty. Or a kitty. Yeah. Or a kitty. Yep. Yes. Oh, Correct. You are armies. one one for one. Also known as Next. Little Army House. Highly recommend go to Felix Trattoria in Santa Monica, uh, California. The best Orchetti that you'll ever have. It's a fact. Handmade. Yes. Pretty sure John, you, what you is guys it? didn't even know what Orchetti was until the, I told you. Yeah. I put this one first for a reason. John, what does this translate as? Orchetti? Army hat. No, ear. Oh, pig's ear. No. Oh, little, I think it's just little ears. But yeah. you are one for one. Number two. So, those are good, especially when they get stuck together. This is a oh. pasta, not this is not uh couscous. Mm. This is Pepe D starts with an L. This is the ball, de Pepe. Isn't it? or is this yes. Yeah. Cini de Pep. Two for two. Moving on to number three. I would like the official name of this, please, not the slang term. So bow ties and the slang. What's the actual name for it? Farfali. John, three for three. Wow. <laughs> John just <laughs> looking at his chops. John, over there. John's, John's biting his tongue, too. He knows he's right off the bat. He's like, did you take a stab at him? <laughs> All right. So you have earned a respin. You are working your way toward a combo slice. Number four. Ooh, damn, you're doing all the good ones. These were also great in um, tomato soup. Fucking yeah, pasta, pasta salad, sucks. too. This is a good pasta salad. What? I've never had this pasta and have it be cooked appropriately. It's always overcooked by about five minutes. Overcooked. Yeah. <laughs> it's because another thing. Mush. Like, people don't realize this. I s highly recommend you cook according to the instructions on your box of mac macaroni or pasta like go on the short end cook it taste it because any of these circular bunched up they always get overcooked because people just leave them in there for like 20 minutes and think it's fine it's not it's really not it's not fine then you're seeing nope. mush i do Spit, i do not know sitting in the face of an of an italian yeah i don't Andrew, know any guesses is. okay this no, is this, this is yeah, I was gonna say it's like some super Italian sounding one because I remember seeing them. It's not. What is it? Radiatore, like radiator. Radiator. Ah, yeah. Yep. Makes sense. You are three, three for four. You have lost your your uh, odds maker. Here we go for number five. This should be an easy one. All right. Perhaps so here's. Not. G versus penne, like what do we got? Because I is, can't remember. This is these the big, yeah, the big fuckers, right? But these have the grooves; they're not smooth. So is that also something? That's rotini. This, this, I'm, I'm almost positive this is penne. Okay, well, I trust John. If you can give me, I'll accept penne. If you can give me penne the regatta. precise name, yeah, fuck, Andrew got penne it. I will give you regatta. For the regate, for the lines, I will give you your other point back. You are now five for five, mm -hmm. I believe. I'm losing track here. I All think right. we're on number five. I don't know. Next one. But I'll take it. Next one. Oh, yeah. These are also great. These are Didolini, buddy. These are dad's favorite fucking macaroni. Hell yeah. Didolini. Yeah. <laughs> Hell Didolini. Yeah. You guys are crushing it. I knew Andrew was getting the dits. <laughs> right. Uh, next one. Yeah, we got one more after this. Oh. So you're six for six, right now. John, take this one away. So this, to me, looks like Cavatelli, also known as yeah. Carvadili. Yes, <laughs> that is correct. I was trying to trip you up which, there. Go with the family name, Cavadils. <laughs> which, um, if you're not doing that frozen, 
I, I'm, I didn't even know that they made these non frozen. Frozen pasta, yeah, what a weird, you idea. know, it is weird, but I feel like for this and Yoki's the other one, I don't know if it's coming up, but those like there's certain pastas that should be eaten from a frozen version or fresh. And this is one of them. I, I don't know if I've ever actually had it fresh. It looks delicious there. Um, yeah, but I'm pretty this sure is one this of the big ones is, that I think it's ricotta based as well, which is why it's usually oh, frozen. Yeah. I was told, I don't know if this to be true, but true pasta, like a straight pasta, like a spaghetti, you shouldn't eat fresh. That should be dried and then boiled. But you are correct. You this is that. Cavatelli. Prince. I don't know. I heard it somewhere. I don't think I'm going to have been like Giada de Laurentiis. <laughs> is that Mr. Barilla? Did Mr. Barilla tell you that? Yeah. DeCecco, Mr. DeCecco. All right. The last one. For a perfect score. We went from five to ten like overnight. How'd that happen? Oh. What do you mean? You got a bunch of rope. <clears throat> this, this isn't Fusilli, is it? Fusilli Jerry or what? <laughs> I I I think we go with Fusilli. Yeah. Is I, it? I don't I don't know. I've seen these so, before. It looks it's spaghetti. I, I'm trying to look. Is there a hole yeah, in just, there? Because bucatini is the straight pasta with the hole in it. There yeah. is no hole. I'll give you it's that. Really There's no hole. hole. The way it's folded around kind of looks like a ramen noodle. I know. That's why it's tripping me up here. But what's the scale here? <laughs> that shadow. These is are roughly. Free. These are roughly the length of a spaghetti. I think we go with Fusilli, Andrew. All right, let's do it. Lock it in. All right, I will. I'll begrudgingly give you Fusilli. This is Fusilli Colbuco. So mm. real Fusilli is short. This is yeah. I call this backup spaghetti. Mom would get this every once in a while. It's yeah, a nightmare to twirl on a fork. Just an absolute bloodbath if you're eating this with red sauce. <laughs> Yeah, it is. But it is a form. It's long fusilli, basically, is what it is. What, like, so. I want to know what the purpose of this is. It's like, what do they call those things The that the Romans used to, like, get water out of a ditch? Oh, the Archimedes They're, spiral? Yeah, the yeah, Archimedes yeah. Archimedes screw? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's what these are. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, do you uh, need to get pasta into your mouth? Just have an Archimedes screw fucking right <laughs> Actually, I yeah, with sauce. Really that might work with yeah. sauce. What if you did that? Yeah, <laughs> somebody should do a little science experiment with that. <laughs> well, so, that's why that or or Chieti is is so, um, I guess, revered in that part of Italy is because they make the perfect cups, for, like holding the sauce. So mm -hmm. there is actual, like. While it's a joke that all pasta is just different shapes, like there's true reasons or there was reasons behind some of the shapes to carry sauce and or texture. So you may not be too far off, but I did think Fusilli was shorter because I remember they were glued together by Kramer for Jerry's statue. So we'll take it though. Yes, I considered I was going to put Fusilli just regular, but it looks very close to um, Rotini. So it would have been too hard to tell. So you guys won. That's the first, I think, one of these I've ever done where somebody's got a perfect score. You have earned well, yourselves. You, you added one back for us. Yeah, but you got the regatta. That was a little curveball. So if you could please, someone could please update the chart so that you have uh, we'll pizza power-ups. How do I get rid of this thing? Stop screen. That was okay. an odds maker, right? That uh, no, uh, yeah, odds maker. You both get, and you get nothing. I don't. I get nothing, which is a shame because I, you guys are overflowing with power ups. But I'm a benevolent. I've lived my host. whole life for that game. Most mostly John, <clears throat> which which reminds me, this I, this is actually what I meant to ask at the top of the show. I'm just remembering now. So one of my children 
has a tendency with stickers. The other has the complete opposite. So are you guys of the camp when you got stickers as a kid, would you save those stickers for the perfect placement, meaning you never would use them and just like save them somewhere? Or would you immediately stick them on something the moment that you receive them? No. Save. You hoard everything that you ever get and you never use it. <laughs> it's just really yeah, it's like true. Exactly. I get anxiety thinking of using a sticker and like using it wrong and then never having it again. I have that bag of stickers just in my drawer from like random stuff I bought that I save and I tell myself I'll put on something and they just sit in there. Yeah. Well, believe it or not, my first and second child can be more opposite in that where one will save it and never use it much like myself and the other will stick them as soon as it hits their hand will stick it on something so go figure that's what they're made you're on that one it's... but i i know stickers speaking of stickers we have our own tmnt shellcast john showed him a few episodes ago it's probably got him handy i keep forgetting to bring them to these other cities i go to so uh, if you want a sticker hit us up on social media at tmnt shellcast but uh, yeah, they're made to be stuck, right, John? Yeah, they are. I'll yeah, I will say, you know, like not using things is a sign that you kind of grew up lower, lower class. Yeah, you're just like, like you don't want to wear your wanna shoes wanna because you don't want to yeah. get dirty. Yeah, yeah, nice. That yeah, was having were like we nice talking about that on sneakers. That? I don't think so. Were we? Oh, I would just like maybe like shoes specifically. Like I remember. I've got some shoes and I never want to wear them because I'm like, well, why would I want to erode the base and like, you know, whatever. Yeah. Like ruin them. But now I'm just like, I bought these shoes and I can afford new shoes. So I'm going to wear the ones that I bought and enjoy them. Yeah. You guys made fun yeah. of me for carrying a phone charger room to room. Now you get it. No, that's no, just... I'll never do that. That's fucking blasphemy. Chris. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, oh. But back to the episode. So we have the Tortoweenie Emerald and the Great Baldini. We're at the museum. And the turtles walk in with Zach and Caitlin. And they're in their disguises with pants. So let's put a point on the big board for the pants. Um, and they stroll on up to April. And they introduce Caitlin to April. And Caitlin says, I want to be just like you. And the turtles acknowledge april as an associate turtle officially so she's not a full turtle she's an associate turtle i think the next step i forget what they called it but it's what mikey is like the grand turtle or something like that and then you become a full-fledged turtle so we now know there are tiers to this thing the turtle they're ragging on mikey pretty heavily at the start of this episode he's getting like grilled like about yeah, the it, rabbit on his head. It's true. Made me think sometimes maybe we're a little too harsh on John on this show as well for his bad uh, segments. Yes. My bad segments. Tar- <laughs> I'm just, I'm just missing it. <laughs> I'll say, John, here's a compliment, John. You've been alarmingly attentive the last few episodes. <laughs> less yawning, less falling asleep. So I appreciate he's, that. He's back on. Oh. How's your coffee uh, off the wagon for Chris and on the wagon for John? Is that right? Yes. Yeah. No. If you're on the wagon, you're abstaining, right? This is a Seinfeld episode. Decaf. If the wagon is Decaf coffee, I am on the wagon and John is off the wagon, meaning he's drinking it. Yes. I'm still going strong with tea. Two weeks in. But we continue. So the April, they talk a little bit. They make fun of Mikey. And then the great Boldini appears. And he's on stage. Big. He looks almost like a train baron, a railroad baron. He's got a big twirly mustache, top hat, cape. And he's getting ready to perform his famous trick. And April explains that this trick is to make the Tortellini Emerald disappear despite this high-class security system of lasers and cameras and armed guards and all these obstacles, he's going to make this sucker disappear. And 
as she's broadcasting this, back, we get our second surprise appearance. Back in his, I don't know you call it, his penthouse, Don Tertelli is watching the TV. And he, he popped up on the screen, and I literally said Don Tertelli out loud. And he <laughs> explains to his henchman that's sitting next to him that the Tortellini Emerald belonged to his grandfather, Tony the Tickler Tertelli. And it was taken from him when the police caught him coming out of the museum with it. And he vows that he's going to get it back. Yeah. I knew Chris. I knew when I read the episode title, I remembered this guy. First of all, don't forget. Don Tortelli has changed form from his first appearance to his second. This is his third now? Third or fourth? Can't remember. Uh, this is his second. He was the same the last episode we saw him, but the first episode, he was a big, fat old guy. Yeah. So, and it was nice continuity with Rodney. Ronnie or Rodney, whatever his name was, was the same from before. His little sidekick. So, yes. that's right. So we have two two of my favorite characters right out of the gate. And we cut back to the museum. And the great Baldini performs his trick. So we have these two little smoke, an orange and like a purple smoke go off. And then the lights flicker for a second. And when they turn back on, the emerald is gone. And the great Baldini is hogtied and gagged on the ground. So April just reporting right through this says, oh, yep, the, the trick worked. Doesn't even acknowledge that he's tied on the ground. And the guards run up. They ungag the great Baldini. <laughs> and he claims that somebody. <laughs> I was just thinking your camera. You might as well be like four pixels right now. Is it really that bad? <laughs> <laughs> Let me see. It's like you're blurred Why out. Why is it? <laughs> like you're being censored. <laughs> <laughs> Why is it so bad? It won't even let me go up <laughs> past seven. I'm on seven twenty. Yeah, seven twenty is the highest we can do. I don't know what's quit, going on. Quit, <laughs> quit blowing so hard. The wind's taking your internet out, Chris. Yeah, the, I have full. <laughs> usually, I get a little signal if it's weak. I'm full bore internet right now. I've got all my Wi-Fi stuff turned off. We're just <laughs> pumping it straight into my laptop. This is so. <laughs> Did it no. do anything? I'm fucking crystal clear <laughs> on my end. Well, we're going to have to push through it. Um, so the great Baldini, he gets ungagged by the guards. And he claims that somebody hit him and stole the emerald before he could even complete his trick. And the crowd gasps. And then the guards barricade the doors. And they say, nobody's leaving this place until we search everyone which causes some concern for the turtles who know that their identity will be revealed if they get searched. So they tell Zach and Caitlin, Hey, go with April. Once this is all sorted, she'll take you home, but shit just got real. So we can't, we can't be playing around anymore. This, um, plot kind of reminds me of that, uh, princess of, Moldovia, Moldovia. Is that was that was this right? Where the turtles had to turtles had to sneak in, and April was like, you know, what I'm talking about. Yeah, and they the were about to get searched. Was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, it's funny you brought that up because in my head I'm thinking I'm like, there's another episode where this exact thing happens, and they have to sneak out without anyone noticing, and we yeah. apparently have already watched it. Okay, nice. Moldovia. Yeah, I think Moldovia. I think you're right, Joe. But so Zach and, and Caitlin, they go to walk off to meet with April, and they see the great Baldini suspiciously sneaking into another room. And Caitlin says, Hey, Zach, we should follow this guy. What if he stole the diamond or the emerald? And Zach kind of has second thoughts. But then he says, you know what? We'll be heroes if he did take it and we stop him. So they follow him through a door. And 
they're going to go investigate. So they see him. He walks into this back door right by a guard into a storage closet through a grate in the storage closet wall that leads down into the basement. And they're kind of sneaking around. They tail him. They poke their heads out and they see the great Boldini pull the Tortellini Emerald from a sewer pipe and hand it to none other than Don Tertelli. And in that exchange, it is revealed that the two of them are cousins. And Zach knows that Tertelli is a bad guy because he heard the turtles talking about it. So he knows that this is no good. And what is that? We got a short fat guy and a tall skinny guy, which was called out last episode. So I just, I had to say it. I, as soon as they were on screen together, I was like, Oh, here we go. Yeah. A little, um, crumb. Who is from uh, real monsters? An ick. Oh yeah. Something? Yeah. Crumb and ick. Um, one, what is that guard doing? Just letting people walk out of the room. First of all, second of all, that's all I had to say about that. <laughs> oh no! Second of all, here's what I had to say: they, they they're cousins, but they greeted each other by their like full names. Did you catch that? They're like, oh, um, what was the guy's name? Bold, Don Baldini or something? And he's like, oh, hello, cousin Don Tertelli. It's like, who does that? I don't know, but I was still laughing because with the Leatherhead and Rat King episode, they call each other Mr. Rat and Mr. <laughs> what was it? It wasn't Mr. Head, was it? Because <laughs> like, we would have joked about that. But yeah, I I think part of it's an effort, yeah, to reorient the listeners, but they do it selectively. It doesn't really make sense because we saw Zach didn't get reintroduced. And I think we got almost a whole episode without his name being said. So yeah. who knows? But it is a funny, it is a funny scene that we're about to ensue with. Well, I think too, like Don Tertelli. Tertelli sounds weird. Don. Don is just a term of respect. So it's really like you have to say Don Tertelli if you're if you're paying him the proper respects. Like Don Corleone. But so that happens downstairs. They're exchanging this emerald upstairs. The police have arrived at the museum. They've surrounded it, and in comes a lieutenant and the turtles. They're shaking in their boots again because they don't know what's about to happen. Um, back downstairs, we get a. There's a lot of cutting back and forth in this episode. So back in the Too basement, much. yeah, Don Tertelli has revealed that one of his construction companies installed an elevator underneath the Tortellini Emerald display case. And they also put a tunnel in the basement. So basically, that's how the heist, when the lights went off, the thing dropped, brought it to the basement. And he is now going to use the escape tunnel that was built to make off with this emerald and reward the great Boldini with some money for his his efforts. Zach and Caitlin, who are kind of hiding in the shadows there, realize what's about to happen. They understand that there's not enough time to go warn the turtles. And Caitlin just dashes out from behind the cover, grabs the Tortellini Emerald from Don Tertelli, and they run off. And they're chased by the two villains and are eventually cornered at a dead end, which was literally signed dead end in the basement of the museum. I Okay, that makes sense. Because I, I thought for a second they were outside because there was some like sunlight coming down. I was very confused. Yeah, hard to know where they're at in general because it does look also, like the outside, but it's the inside, but it's a basement, but it was through like the vents. So I don't, I'm not sure either. I really know. When, when, um, Don is about to escape down this into the sewer grate and K1 steals the emerald, it's the most delayed like reaction that's so like she steals the emerald and then three seconds later he's like come back with my emerald he's got the worst reaction time that i've ever seen yeah i'll also say we talked i think last episode which sucked the show not this podcast 
<laughs> about how like there's some Scooby Dooish animation going on. This little like where they're running with like the diamond held out in their hand felt very Scooby Doo to me. Or the emerald. I keep saying diamond. But I agree. All that's going on in the basement, back up in the main room of the museum. April tries to use her star power to sneak the turtles past the police and this lieutenant who have popped in. She says, hey, these guys are with me. You don't need to search them. But they do get searched. And they search April's little bag. They pull off the hat of one of the turtles, which causes them to just reveal themselves. And immediately the police say, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, they're the ones that stole the emerald. And they draw their guns. Rare to see a gun in a cartoon. They draw their guns and point them right at the turtles' hearts, ready to blast them to smithereens. It, it, yeah, it escalated pretty quickly. It's also like, you know, I feel like the turtles had developed somewhat of a reputation that they fight crime. And they immediately get accused of stealing this emerald. So it's like, and they're pretty distraught about it too. They like, Leo's like, we can't, you know, have our reputation tarnished by this. Oh, Leo, this episode too, like he was such a whiny little baby in this episode. Everything he said had that whiny tone. It was a little bit. I do. I think it's, uh, I had my, in my notes here, like, why do they just give up so easily and drop their disguises instead of trying to sneak out? I don't know. That's a good point. But they don't it, utilize the ninja of, part of what they do. They're not very stealthy now that you say that. Yeah. So I think, uh, I mean, obviously they're building up the plot here and they have to kind of like force some things to happen. But I just felt like, especially this part of the episode, the plot just wasn't wasn't working for me. It felt kind of forced with with kind of all these elements. But I was happy to see some recurring characters. So that's what this episode has going for it. Some recurring, and some of them have been like more than 20 episodes since we've seen them. So yeah. I'm here for that. So upstairs, the turtles are held up at gunpoint. Back downstairs, Caitlin and Zach are cornered. Caitlin does the old fake a roo she pretends she's going to throw the emerald and then it's a it's a run pass option is what it is she runs the rpo zach runs it up the middle she hands it to him he runs away sneaks past don tertulli and the great boldini but don tertulli quick on his feet he grabs caitlin and tries to ransom her basically in exchange for the emerald so he tells zach listen i'll trade you the emerald for your girlfriend and if you don't do it I'm going to tickle the shit out of this girl and you're going to wish you traded her back. Yeah. I don't, you know, taking one little kids and I don't know what's going on this episode. Don's the whole tickle thing just is kind of, I don't know. It's like, he's a mobster and he, they couldn't be killing people. So we had to tickle him. It just seems odd. I shouldn't yeah, yuck it. It does get though. it would like once it was kind of uh-huh. This is the third, I think, time we've now seen him th- like tickling away. And it's <laughs> it is getting very strange at this point. That's his thing. And yeah, like holding the girl, and I think he even say, he says, like, how do you want it, Blondie, or something? It was yeah. a little cringe for sure. Yeah. Speaking of cringe, back upstairs. The turtles are held at gunpoint. April, fucking think for yourself, or just walks outside, leaves them alone. And then the cops kind of advance a little bit, and we get this Irish guy who mistakes them for leprechauns. So he's got this thick Irish accent. He's like, oh, no, they'd never do this. They're just leprechauns. They're little green guys. That provides just enough of a distraction for the turtles to make a break for it. They run outside past April, who's reporting that the turtle stole the Tortellini Emerald. So not only did she yeah. ditch them, she then throws them under the bus on live TV. They grab her Channel 6 news van and they drive off in a high-speed pursuit from the police. It, it, I can't. I cannot believe April just left 
She's like, oh, turtles are getting arrested. See ya. That just always going for the story was kind of, I was shocked, honestly. It was shocking. Also shocking, we didn't mention it at the top, but the person she was interviewing at the beginning wasn't even the right specialist. He was a, he was a paleontologist, and she was trying to get information on the gem, gemology, whatever gem. you want to call it. So yeah, she's but, obviously not on her game, but yeah, she just lets lets the turtles leaves them high and dry, and then report falsely reports on it as uh, as they're running away. So yeah, doesn't even check her sources. Very shoddy reporting going on by April right now. Sensationalism, sensationalist journalism, is that what it's called? That's what she's going for. So off the turtles go. They're in the Channel Six News van, pedal to the metal, back in the basement. Uh, Zach finally breaks. So he doesn't want to see Caitlin get tickled. Uh, the great Baldini, he can't even watch what's about to happen. He's like, this is too much for me. I'll, I'm going to avert my eyes. Zach finally says, fine, take this emerald back, you rats. And right on cue, my jaw dropped. The Rat King walks out of the shadows. Andrew's favorite. My, I, I literally Slack said, dog. holy shit, when I... Because it was like, you just say the word rat and he's there. And now yeah. it's like, I, I'm obsessed with it. Like anytime it comes up, I'm just going to be like, is it the Rat King? Is it the Rat King? I love it. He, We just had him for an episode. He shows up again here. And this is where I was confused because I'm like, how are they in the sewers? <laughs> like, what? I'm all, I was all messed up because of the, um, the basement and how they had it set up. But I'm here for it. We've got three... Recurring guests, Zach, Tertel, Don Tertelli, and now Rat King. So, I mean, if the episode, I mean, they could do nothing in this episode, and it would be great for that reason alone. So, yeah. I'm here for it. Yeah, the Rat King's like, he's like Beetlejuice. You just say rat, and he appears. So, that his he's appearance. He's also like the Beatles because he's so, he's a fan favorite. It's true. Yeah, he's getting a lot of airtime. I think the most of any non-main character at this point. So his appearance alone causes enough confusion for Don Tertulli to drop Caitlin and she and Zach kind of run off. Tertulli insults the Rat King. He doesn't think much of him, which causes the Rat King to sick his army of rats on Tertulli and the Great Boldini. They kind of get swarmed for a little bit and then they cry uncle and they say, all right, stop stop, we'll give you whatever you want, what do you want? And the Rat King says that because Don Tertelli has built a tunnel in his domain, that he is owed a tax. And what he wants for payment for the tax is the Tortellini Emerald. And the Great Boldini is like, well, you just allowed those kids to run away with it. So we're going to have to go get it now if you want that. Which is a great evil move. He not only demands a tax but then he he says they owe him even more or that he'll repay you know they'll owe him a favor if he recaptures the people that he was thwarting from the beginning yeah i was like man rat king's genius evil genius he can't he can't get it wrong he can't lose yeah i love the rat king too because he he's grown on me so much i didn't like him when i first saw him but his just he's a true like anarchist it's just all about him and his rats and he doesn't really care if it's the turtles or anyone else. He just is all out for himself. So I kind of like that, especially in a villain. So that happens in the basement. Back up topside, the turtles have lost the police tail by driving the Channel 6 news van into the sewer entrance. The great, they kind of park in there. The cops go flying by and they decide to call April. And April's like, hey, where are the kids? And the turtles are like, uh, we sent them to go with you. What are you talking about? And that causes them to realize that Zach and Caitlin must still be in the museum. Back at the museum basement, this is where we're just going back and forth with these cutscenes. The Rat King says, all right, I'll find these kids for a price for you, Tortellini and Boldini. And they agree to. And the Rat King says, all right. He goes and whispers to his rats. He says, go find those kids and keep everybody else out of this museum. 
So they swarm out, they drive everybody screaming out of the museum, and they start their search. I mean, yeah. Good. Was well, these rats? They like they're biting micro. They're biting chips in the mainframe, and like one gets like zapped, like electrocuted. I like that. I don't know what the hell's going on. Yeah. It's kind of chaos. I like the little uh, rat electrocution thing, but let's forget you. Those rats are strong enough to chew through like concrete floors or brick floors in the sewer. So (laughs) Rat King just making his enslaved rats do do his dirty work. Yeah, his work. Rats are terrifying what they're actual capable of in real life, too. Yeah. So to John's point, these rats, they go into the control room. They're biting all these circuits and everything, presumably to control the security system. They lock the building down. All these like guarded window things drop. So they're they're running the show. Meanwhile, outside, the turtles have snuck back onto the scene, and they're hiding behind a Tertelli Museum remodeling van. And they're kind of putting their plan together, and then they look up, and they're like, oh, shit. This is Tertelli Museum Remodeling. That's Don Tertelli. And inside, the kids are, they're running for their lives from the great Boldini and Tertelli. They're flying across the museum floor. They realize they're about to get caught. They have nowhere to go because they're locked in. So they decide to hide the Tortoise Emerald in the, la- in quote, the last place the villains would look. So we don't know where that is, but they get, they hide it and then they get kidnapped. Again, outside, April has now snuck over to where the turtles are behind the van, and she tells them all about the rats that are running around and driving everyone out. And then they that puts a light bulb in their head, and they're like, oh, shit. The kids are inside with not only Don Trutelli, but also the Rat King. Like, we have to get in there and save them. So, how are they going to do that? Well... They decide to open up the back of the van and see what's going on because they're like, if this is Don Tertelli's van, there's got to be some sort of clue in here that leads us to him. They open the back doors and there's just a giant manhole sewer access. And Donnie's like, yeah, if he's he's still got to be in there. Otherwise, this van would be gone. Let's jump into this tunnel, go in there and kick his ass. And as they're about <laughs> to do that, the cops show up. That Irish cop, the only good cop oh, out Shaughnessy. there. Yeah, O'Shaughnessy, he says, freeze right there. You're under arrest. I need to come back to the scene of the crime. And they try and negotiate with him. April's like, listen, these are the good guys. I swear, trust me. And the turtles, they cut a deal and they say, listen, give us one hour to find this Tortoise Emerald. And if we can't find it and find the people that stole it, we'll turn ourselves in. And Shaughnessy agrees to it against his better nature. And then April gives him a nice smooch on the cheek. After the negotiation was complete, really just a superfluous mm-hmm. smooch, but he gets all bashful because he likes it. Maple and a lot of lipstick too. Leaves a little lipstick on his cheek. Yeah. She also, her, she's quite top heavy these days. And um, O'Shaughnessy had a gun pulled like, Speaking of guns, we got a close up of just like him with his pistol in the air. I think at this point, um, but yeah, of course, April using her, using her, her looks and all the badonk from recent episodes to uh, buy some time. Yeah, yeah, he's holding like a cold forty five, like cowboy revolver too. We're gonna blast someone away. Very bosomy. Yeah, she's bodacious, April. So inside. Uh, the kids are getting tickled and the Rat King, it's uh, it's such a vicious tickling that the Rat King's like, I can't be a part of this. I'm going to go peruse these halls, find some art for my kingdom. And he's sitting down, he's kind of looking at the paintings with his rats and the turtles stumble upon him. And they're like, holy shit, it's the Rat King. And he just instantly smoke bombs them like you'll pay for this and just lobs it right into their kitchen. It explodes. All the smoke comes up. It clears. He's always so prepared, this Rat King. Like, 
to have the wherewithal to just be able to throw a smoke bomb and like instantly disappear and just bamboozle the turtles is he's unbelievable. I think it's also his evil genius. He's so paranoid. He's always like, he can't be around humans, you know? So yeah, could be it, but you and those smoke bombs have gotten the turtles every time shredders use them. It always works. And now rat King's using it. And also this, this painting of cheese that's in this, what I assume is the Met, right? Or the Guggenheim. Is that where they are? The Guggen, yeah, somewhere. It's a museum. The Guggenheim Circular. Yep. I just, <clears throat> do you know the saying, hey, like, hanging in the Louvre? Are you aware of the saying? Yeah. Andrew, you, you're not? It's like when. No. I'm trying to, Chris, explain. Hey, in the Louvre. It's like an like ironic the... way. Yeah, it's an ironic way to, like, say something. Like, if you had a really bad drawing, you'd be like, ah, oh, hanging in the Louvre. Because oh, it's a fancy museum. Hang it. Oh, I yeah. thought you said hanging, like loitering. I'm like, never heard that. Oh, <laughs> that's hanging in the loo. That's how the Brits say I'm going to take a shit. Yeah. Did you make that up? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was the whole point of that joke. It was just a, sh- a fucking <laughs> no. <poop> joke. No, no, <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it took a five minute diversion to make a toilet joke. <laughs> no, I just it because it, like why is there a painting of a piece of cheese in this museum? It's a still life. That's like the painting of fruit or whatever. I like this I read, museum. There's a variety of art hanging around. And I think actually one of the NECA it might have been with the Rat King, but one of the accessories to someone or something is that painting, which I'll dig up at some point if I have That's it. awesome. Do you Here's a question for you. Artwork. Like real deal artwork. Do you have any hanging in your house? Like that you admire as you walk by? I would if I had room. I have uh, Don Pendleton shout out elephant.com. I've got some of his work. Chris actually uh, gave me my first original. I think. I did. But it's not hanging because I don't have room for it. Unlike what you, about John, that like topographical map of uh Coeur d'Alene? That one okay. I do have yeah, I have that one. That one actually is hanging up. In... Better be. Yeah. <laughs> nice save. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, yeah, I think it's in actually I, think it's... Is hanging up. <laughs> I did see one recently though. Um I want to send you guys a picture. So I say an Airbnb of some place that had one of those of a different state or a different um, lake. So I saw mm-hmm. one out in the wild. But yeah, that one's hanging in my office, which is soon to be decommissioned. So I like, um, I kind of want to get a big, I looked into it for a bit, but I'm, I'm a big fan of subway maps of different cities. Yeah, those are cool. And um, I want to kind of want to get one of uh, the greater Boston area. Sure. I think there's a company that does those in like an artsy form yeah. too. Yeah, you probably found them. Yeah. I have a big acrylic bear painting in my office and then I have yeah, you know, uh, a bunch of other stuff my, too. My birthday is coming up. Yeah. Actually, really next episode, I'm gonna, I'll be mailing you guys something for next episode. We will open on air together. I believe so Chris, be you said gift. you had a game changing surprise. Yeah, this is what it is. It took a little bit longer to get to me. And then I have to do some things and then send it out to you. But it will be mailed out this weekend. Well, and just to wait on his mad minute to be mailed to him. Yeah. You're going to get that yeah, in the that, mail. That was a like long a wait for stress. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So the Rat King smoke bombs turtles and then he disappears to the control room for the museum the turtles once the smoke clears they hear the kids laughing from being tickled so much so they head off to find them down the hallway back in the control room the rat king he's in full chaos mode he uses the climate control system to create blizzard like conditions indoors so he cranks the ac he turns the sprinklers on 
which turns the water into snow. And the turtles, they're physically blown off their feet. They tumble into the wall. And then it just starts to snow. It's it's whiteout conditions in the hallway of this museum. It's un- unbelievable, the, the climate control in this museum. Yeah. I mean, it has to be precise for fine art. Gale force wins. What does that mean, gale, gale force? What's I a gale? A strong wind? Yeah. It's like below a hurricane. Gotcha. It is, um, it's sustained surface winds moving at a speed of between 34 and 47 knots, which is 39 to 54 miles per hour. Good to know. So the turtles, they're knocked off their feet. They're getting buried in snow in the hallway. Zach, who's taking the brunt of this tickle torture, finally cracks. And he's like, fine, I'll show you where this, this tortellini emerald is. Turns out they put it back in the case that it was stolen from. Is that so what, they, is that where they hit it? Yeah, so I think it's like, we'll hide it in the most obvious place. They'd never look there. That was kind of the deal. So I had in my notes. We never, re- we never learned where it was hidden. Maybe that was my assumption. I think that's where they were standing when they grabbed it. But Tortellini or t- Tortelli <laughs> and the Great Boldini... They grab this emerald, and right as they grab it, the oh, weather you think hits it's them. a combination of their names? Maybe. Uh, you know, United. I mean, Tertelli was clearly a play on turtle. Boldini, yeah, maybe they just made Boldini. So when you smash them together, it sounds like Tortellini. I mean, what was the island called? Was it the island of Tortelli, or was it Tortellini as well? The island of Tortuga. No, 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 I think it was Tur- Turtel. Yeah, I think it was the Turtelli. Yeah, the Isle of Turtelli. That's where the olive oil was from, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Well, but I have nothing to add. Nothing more. To add. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so they oh, hold on. So they grab this this emerald. The weather hits them. Uh, fuck me! I just lost my spot. Remember that? Just thinking of these gale force winds. Gail from Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out Gail. <laughs> that was the most one of the best videos I've ever seen. Gail signing off. When the fucking internet takes over a video. Did you ever see these, Andrew? The she was a Walmart associate. No. There was some, some video of her like she was over the intercom and she's like Gail something or other signing off. And it was like a tribute video. And then everyone <laughs> just turned it into like the funniest shit you've ever seen in yeah. your life. The comments are great. It's like I served two tours with her in like the Illinois Walmart. Yeah. It's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, They're like putting like sports highlight videos of like nothing, like no, nothing would ever compare to Gail in the early nineties or yeah. something. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, I found my spot again. So, uh, they grab the Tortellini Emerald from the case. The weather hits them, and the blizzard gives enough diversion for the kids to run off. Tortellini and fucking Tortellini, Tortelli and the Great Baldini don't pursue because they have the Emerald now, so they don't need the kids. They don't care. And the kids, they're like lost in the snow in the hallway. They're like dying, basically. The turtles are the same way, but they find Zach and Caitlin kind of buried in the snow. They grab the two of them, and the kids tell them, they're like, hey, Tertelli made off with the Tortellini Emerald. we got to stop him. But the turtles, they're like, no, no, no. We need to stop the weather first. That's the priority here. we got to stop this blizzard. Then we'll figure it out. Caitlin pops up, and she's like, hey, I know where this control room is from a school field trip that I took here. So she goes toward the control room with Donnie, because Donnie does machines. And the other turtles and Zach decide to go back to the secret tunnel in the basement. Zach's like, hey, I know where this is. That's where they're going to go. We'll head them off there. So that brings us to our segment for the show. Because Caitlin mentioned a field trip. We're going to do best, worst field trip edition. 
maybe we did this before. It felt a little familiar. I couldn't recall specifically. John seemed to think that we didn't. So we're going to go with it. And if this is a segment that we've already been done, maybe we'll have to compare to what our answers were the first time. <laughs> so we'll go I think, oldest. I think you're oldest. right. I think you're right. I think we may have done it the more I think about it, but it will be even funnier if we have. And that if the answers are the same or different. So yeah. I'm on board. So we'll go oldest to youngest. Angie, I'll let you decide if you want to go best first or worst first. Take it away. I'm going to go worst first. And I feel like this would have been my answer before. Old Sturbridge Village. Hmm. I feel like I've talked about this before on the on the show. Um, if you grew up in anywhere in New England, you, you may have gone there because it's like, like a pre-revolutionary war kind of town with actors and living museum. Living museum, as they say. Um, it sucks. Don't give them your money. Well, give them it one time. But there's no need to go back. And growing up there, we had to go every single year. Therefore, it became my least favorite field trip experience. And I've never been back since. What about their fireworks? Counterpoint. <clears throat> yeah. So if you like rock candy, fireworks, and milking goats, it's your place. It is. <laughs> I heard their bakeries quite good as well or something like the restaurants, not bad, but outside yeah. that someday I will go back. I'll bring my kids, but I really, I mean, I've gone so many times that I, I've hit my quota. My well, they've quota. revamped. So when we were kids, it was a strictly like, I observe these people acting out every day, 1700s life. Now it's more, if you've ever been to Plymouth plantation, which I, th I believe they changed the name, so forgive me, because I don't think that's politically correct anymore. But it's more interactive now, so you can kind of talk to them, like go in and do some of the activities. So I believe it's become a better experience. But when you're a kid, who wants to watch some lady knit in front of a fireplace and just like stand there and watch her? Not me. Yeah, I just feel like field trips as a kid, especially like – what was that in middle school or what have you like they need to be active interactive you can't just be standing around watching people do stuff because that's basically what you do as a kid most of your life so i'm selling or that's the worst field trip hmm. john you are up oh you can choose best or worst we'll do it we're not going to stick to the theme here let's mix it up a little bit i'll go worst and I'm gonna go when you had a field trip to the high to the high school when you were in like elementary school and you took a field trip, or you were in like sixth grade and you took a field trip to junior high to go and preview what the next grade was gonna be like. Does that like count a as sick, a field trip? Sick joke. That's what it sounds Those, like. They call that step up day, don't they? Oh, we'll step up to this. Oh thing. shit! That's right. Yeah, what a what a fraud! Hey, let's take you from one school and bring you to a different school. This field <laughs> trip. Yeah, <laughs> it's like when you put a fish, like a goldfish, you got to leave it in the bag in the fish tank before you release it. That's what step up day was. Why do you do that? So the water acclimates. Yeah, and you yeah, don't shock buoyancy. it. Buoyancy. I think it's a buoyancy thing. Remember buoyancy. when we caught that fish and put it in the fish tank? Yeah, I think a smallmouth bass we just dumped in a fish tank. <laughs> I forgot to it move just that. floated around and died. Yeah. <laughs> or no, it didn't. If you're listening, Peta. Yeah, yeah. John didn't have two goldfish and have one die, and then its body just decompose in the tank while the other was still alive. That never. In the most. I, what are you talking about? That was. Are you actually denying that happened, John? Yeah, Chris. I had a goldfish that lived. It's still alive. I bet. That thing, yeah, you had two to start and one died and you never took it out of the tank. How do you what who says that? My vivid memory, my my <laughs> I don't ever remember John having goldfish in the like any fish. He just had a bird. <laughs> he had he had goldfish. Remember we had mice? John's mouse killed mine. John had a, a sick animal. Sick animal owner. <laughs> <laughs> the rabbit. Yeah, they had the Poor biggest rabbit. double chin. 
yeah. That rabbit was so constipated, it was pooping out like <laughs> boulders. <laughs> the fact that dad just let a rabbit live in our house is probably the most absurd thing yeah. ever. Knowing dad, yeah, he would never allow that. <laughs> I can't believe you. Yeah, that's that's why it's suspicious when he moves the crate outside and suddenly the the rabbit died. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> was like, died. That oh, was basically. I woke like, up and it was eaten through the cage. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that was like Jurassic Park when they tie the goat to the post and just let whatever come feast on it. But speaking of animals, I'm gonna go best field trip, and that's the aquarium. I ne- we didn't do a zoo. I'm going to say aquarium because we did the, the Boston Aquarium. You walk in, you catch a whiff of those penguins. They stink, but you can kind of look above them. Somebody usually accidentally drops something into the penguin, penguin pit. And then <laughs> you walk around, you just look at polar bear, some seal. The electric eel was always There's cool. no polar bear at the aquarium. Well, whatever. They had that in Worcester at the, uh, <laughs> the, at the Ecotarium. <laughs> There's, I'm pretty sure there's a polar bear at the, there might have been at one point at the Boston Aquarium. I don't think so. A we'll polar bear? Yeah. They're known for bear. their seals. Yeah, because they just come out of the ocean. They're right there. <laughs> but the aquarium, great. Who doesn't love to look at fish in a tank? I do. You, apparently. Yeah. It's, it's yeah I mean, of all the zoo type places, I feel like the aquarium's maybe the least bad because they're like smaller things that swim around. But the Boston Aquarium, I feel like I've been there too many times to really appreciate it. Just like Old Surbridge Village. It's like one of those places we always went. And now I, it, I'll never need to go again. There's so, so much better aquariums that exist. Have you I've been? been? I've heard one. Atlanta. What's... There's supposed to be an awesome aquarium somewhere here in the U.S. At least a couple of them. I think it's. I, a, I think Atlanta. I think you're right. Is it Atlanta? I think if so. You yeah. Mostly down on down to Atlanta. Hit up the aquarium, and go to the magical world of Coke, Coca Cola, or Happy yeah. World, whatever they call it. It is. I cried. When I was the there. world of Coke, Coca Cola. Yeah. Wow. They they really embrace the Coke makes you happy. And it, it does. And then <laughs> just brainwashed. And then, at, and then at the end, there's fountain drinks as far as the eye can see, and you can try Coca Cola from around the world. So if you want to go like try Mexican Coca Cola or like China or Japan, you can whatever it, any flavor you ever wanted is there. It's wow. crazy. I mean, I feel like a lot of them would probably be the same. But it's magic. I think Atlanta, I, the sign of a good aquarium is when they have one of those tunnels you walk through and it's like 360 view of the tank. That's the key. I so had far. actually had the aquarium on my worst list. Yeah, it was up there. How many are, how many are you doing for best and worst, by the way? Just one, one. one of each. Oh, it's been shit. so long okay. since we... I mean, we can do honorable mentions, obviously. All right. All right. Well, is it coming back to me, or are you? Does it snake it back? Yeah, no, you you go. All right, the best field trip has to be Fenway Park or some sporting event, like a game. Hmm. And they were rare, mostly later in life, um, possibly even in college was my first time I went to a sporting event field trip. But to college field trip, I feel like. Yeah, which we we the same field college field. Where are you getting? Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah I guess I assumed it was with. Yeah, that's that's fair. That's valid. Yeah. The field trip, buddy. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna say Fenway Park. Nothing better than leaving. Actually, in fact, I remember my. It was my freshman year. This wasn't a field trip, but we got out of school like April 29th or something ridiculous at the end of April and not May. And there happened to be a Red Sox game that day. So I went to the game on the last day of school, and I was flying so high that you wouldn't even know it. Hmm. Like I was in fucking outer space because it was one of the greatest experiences. So with that said, you leave school. (laughs) 
came out in May, in April. What the? F what are you talking yeah, about? I got out of I think school. That's when like you get out of school, April. isn't that when it happens? Because graduation is like the second week of May. Oh, see, are you talking college? You talking college? Year. I said college. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a normal. That's when you get out. He's right. Yeah. The point is, you're taking away from how great sporting event field trips are, and yeah. we all know. The worst place when you're in school is school, and the best place is not. And Fenway <laughs> Park is legendary. It's great. You always go peanuts. You always go sausage, and you have a great time. So that's the uh, best I will say to that's a great pick because the and maybe it's just Fenway, but a baseball park is one of the few places that you still get that field trip feeling when you go there as an adult. The smell. The smell of the sausages and onions. There's just something about walking into Fenway in particular that it just feel it makes you feel good. You know, I was initially going to poo-poo this idea, but that you would go there. But how off? How many times have you been at a Sox game and they're like, and now celebrating like, you know, uh, Holland Elementary School or whatever? Like, and then all the kids stand up and cheer. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, if you get in the Dunkin' dugout, you're. I mean, you might as well be a beetle at that point. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We did have a couple field trips. They weren't school, though. They weren't they for co Coke with Dad? Yeah. Yeah. Dad, they used to do family, like, family Appreciation Day. Yeah. That was back when so Coke were... actually cared about people. <laughs> yeah. Those were pretty great. Yeah. Imagine not taking your whole production factory or like entire company to a Red Sox game. Like, yeah, clearly they cut that because it was probably tens of thousands of dollars. But yeah. any event, I rest my case. Best Fenway, worst old service village. All right. Well, my best is it might be a little controversial. I'm saying the state house. The state house. You go, there's something about when you're learning, and this is probably, you know, ninth, tenth grade, maybe, where you're learning about how government works and you go and you take a field trip to the place where government is done and you sit in the Senate seats and the house seats, the state Senate seats and the state house seats. And in Massachusetts, I assume every state government has a golden dome. Can't can neither confirm nor deny that, but it's just fun. You go to, you go there, you get to see the things you go to the city for the, you know, or whatever, and then maybe you hit a Red Sox game on the way home, so it's the best of both worlds. <laughs> maybe some lunch in Faneuil Hall, perhaps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, which was also on my list of honorable mentions, yeah. but I will say I don't think all of them are gold-domed, mm -hmm. and I've noticed in some of the cities in the West, they did a really good job of like building the Main Street, so you look like right upon the Capitol building or the State House, whatever you want to call it. That's yeah. nice. Yeah. Yeah, it's Same like the National Mall all. type thing. Yeah, and this is obviously just local, but like Austin has one right here. Boise, uh, Boise is actually great. It it truly is right downtown. So, yeah, it was fun. But politics, well, John? You, politics, really? Well, here's here's my thing too. With now that you mentioned about city planning around the state house, I got a bone to pick with Sim City. You'd only get the state house when you hit a certain population, and you've already built the infrastructure, so you can't really build your city around your sort of city government state house. And that always bugged me. John, you got to redevelop air. That's the thing with Sim City. You became too locked into your initial layout. Cities are constantly bulldozing, rebuilding, reconfiguring. The streets, though? That. I feel like we're not making a lot of streets. You talk streets. To all the time, rerouting roads, highways. That's what I do for a living. But highways, do we re you gonna, reroute highways? Yes. No, I do. So suck on that. <laughs> I'm about to. I'm about to trump John. To state house. Any place you have to be quiet when you're walking around, get out of my field trip. Here's what you didn't you think of, quiet. John. In the state house, you don't have to be quiet. Yes, you do. That's a lie. You have to be respectful. Here's what you didn't think about, and that is the Freedom Trail. 
because the Freedom Trail, Touch Em All, State House, check that off the list. The Old North Church, check that off the list. You don't go in the State House on the Freedom Trail. You put you right there. That's usually where the bus picks you up and drops you off. You can stare at it. The Gold Dome is the best piece anyway. Maybe that sacred cod or whatever they hang. I'm in the, in the Gold Dome, baby. I'm chambers. the fucking memory gram of the yeah, Gold The Old dome. North Church, I'm sitting in the same booth that Kennedy sat in. Um, seeing where Paul Revere rode his horse, the lanterns, you get everything. And it's when you do it in high school, it's like the first one where it's like, hey, we trust you guys to walk around and kind of do your own thing a little bit. Just don't get lost. So you can pick where you want to eat. You get all the the sights and sounds of Boston. And it's really just one of the cooler field trips that I remember. So shout out to the Freedom Trail. Wow, we had job. a we had a very heavy best worst New England edition. I feel like, yeah. I mean, what do other people go to? Like, I'm sure they do beaches and like tropical spots or whatever, and warm spots. A lot of people go do field trips down to DC or up to DC. I guess depending on where you are to go see where the real gov- the real what do they call it? Yeah, uh, U.S. government happens. Yeah, DC is. Where the National Malls are, or the Smithsonian's, beautiful area. And those museums are just awesome mm. and free. So yeah. that was that was best worst, first time in a while. John just only does reptile drafts. <laughs> Some of us like to mix it up a little bit. It's actually, every, I, we do a reptile draft probably every three episodes. So Yeah, and I never, because it's always spaced out. I'm like... Maybe I'll get one this time. Then John Reptile Draft right in my face. <laughs> yeah. I fucking come out with the fucking haymakers. You're you can't get a you can't get yeah. a bad segment by me, baby. Yeah, I'm scrapping. I'm putting up like <laughs> Rondo triple doubles, like ten points, eleven rebounds, and eleven assists. Just picking up the pieces of the other segments that are left. John's just shack feed feed me the reptile draft down in the post every time. Well, how about honorable mentions? We one. Uh, I'll start it off. Thanks, Chris. Um, <laughs> Ecoterium I had on there is one of the worst. It's like, what is that? Literally, the, it's it's a poor man's zoo slash <laughs> children's <laughs> like science museum slash uh, like aquarium. It's kind of like a hybrid yeah. of all of the things, and it doesn't hit the mark on any one. The Ecoterium is the only place I've been where their zoo animals are. Just what you would see in the woods. They have like <laughs> turkeys Squirrel. and like an, like a an owl. Like everything you could just look out your window and see around here. A couple, a couple just, birds just flew in yeah. and they didn't let them out. <laughs> <laughs> Basically. And the last time I was there, they had a polar bear. It was actually the oldest living polar bear in captivity. And then it passed away from old age. And they didn't close the exhibit. So like you walk down this separate path to the polar bear tank. And there's just nothing in it. It was a little yeah. sad. I remembered him and um actually I've gone back recently with some of my kids and their like science piece of it is actually not bad. Like they've got some cool things, but it's a weird mishmash. So yeah. Do you do the dinosaur remember. bench? You sit on the bench and feel like the rumbles from dinosaur footprints or whatever? Footsteps? No. It's a shame. What is this? What else you got? Was that your only one? On the worst, I had the library. Oh yeah, remember that? Oh, across they bring the street. You to get your library uh, card or like your first library book. I remember that field trip. Yeah, I, I had the aquarium as the worst. Yeah, art museum. When you're a kid, you just don't appreciate the art. That always oh. kind of sucks. We did talk about this because we. I swear we've talked about the Worcester Art Museum. That's what I was saying. I, was, I remembered vividly an yeah. art museum conversation. Hagen's Armory. And John and John was like, what's the art museum? And we had a whole conversation. I agree. Like oh, yeah. art, even as an adult, like to go to a place to look at art is so a weird concept to me. Like to just be in a room staring instead of just looking at it online. <laughs> yeah. So there's, um. so I think what you need to do, like the art museums, I mean, it makes sense. They have like themes, right? For a while, um, what's the famous painting of the flowers? Poppies. The, 
Monet. No. Monet. Puppies. It's not puppies. It's like, what the hell is it? Poppies. Poppy field. Van- no, it's like Van Gogh. No, it's not puppies. Um, but they like do themes. Monet flowers. Well, this isn't it. Um, <laughs> it was poppies. I bet poppies came up. <laughs> no, it didn't. It didn't. <laughs> this, this can't be right. No. Uh, <laughs> no, but they also do. I was actually just um, I had seen this thing that was like, what are some good ways to like get dressed up but not spend a lot of money on like a date and someone's like the they the museums do like a first night where you can get all dressed up fancy and get like $25 tickets and go and watch art I will say I've been kind of into opera like classical music lately I've been I've just been listening to some of it and I have wanted I've been wanting to go to an opera or like a one of those type things Maybe not a fancy one, but there's gotta be there should be a casual opera that you can go It's to. called Broadway and I know it's not music, but I feel like that would have been a great trip. We never did that. Like a Broadway or something. Musical. Like yeah. musical of some nature. I had that on my I had that. We remember we went to the what do they call Nutcracker? that place in Worcester? No no no. Oh, the consortium? No no no. The all I can think is construct- construction museum or construction hall or something. I know what you're talking about. It's right by WPI. Yeah, what was that called? The fuck you something hall. Mechanics hall. Yeah, the- Mechanics hall, yep. That's a- <laughs> it's close. Construction hall. <laughs> <laughs> Did I ever yeah, go there? You go and see. Yeah, he definitely. John went there because he was a clarinet nerd, so he probably went with his band. Yeah, to honk on my clarinet. Here's so I did this um, maybe a year or two ago, and I told everyone about it, and I would I highly recommend it. Coolest thing you do. They around the country, you can go and watch movies, and they have a live orchestra that does the soundtrack to the movie. So I went and watched. Harry Potter, the the uh, Sorcerer's Stone, and the, they had just a live orchestra. The whole, all the music throughout the movie was just done live, and you could like order drinks. It was the coolest thing ever. So cool. That's awesome. That does actually. I that is nice. on my list. I'd like to do that. I think they do Star Wars too. Yeah. I remember they were doing, but yeah, it's very Lord cool because you're sitting there, and you're just like, huge. man, this is it's incredible. The French horn player. That did the do 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 a standing ovation at the end. Standing O. That guy's probably lived his whole life just to do that. Yeah. The French really horn is like the they're like the elite of the the brass people, right? Um I think the French horn's a big deal from what I know about music. The French horn is very I don't even know what the French horn oh, that's a French horn. Yeah. You, yeah, you know the French horn. You put your hand in it when you're playing a bass. Yeah. Yeah, I'd want to be like a tuba guy or a sousaphone. Irises, that's what Van Gogh painted. Poppies. Somebody painted poppies. You said Monet. Mm. Anyway, Kristen Monet. I will say what I will say is, I started Harry Potter audiobooks. I'm on number book mm. two, Chamber of Secrets. So far, so good. Worst book. Don't I know that's my least favorite book. John, where are you in your Harry Potter read book club? Yeah. We're uh, almost actually on Prisoner of Azkaban, book three. We're on uh, chapter 15. No, sorry, 13 of book three. So we're making our way through. Yeah. Next one, Goblet of Fire. Wait till you get to the Goblet of Fire, baby. I will say book clubs are great. Big fan of reading along and then discussing with other. I mean, I'm discussing with like an 11 year old, but yeah. So Andrew, if you if you and the fam ever get into Harry Potter, let me know. We'll start do book club two point Yeah, maybe we'll catch you on the upswing once we get to audiobook number four or whatever. We move yeah, kind of the more the merrier. Wow. Nothing worse than getting passed in a book club. <laughs> Left in the dust. 
Chris, if you want it, I mean, it's Sundays at 4 p.m. Eastern. Bring some snacks. We read three chapters and just talk about it. But that's NASCAR time. You're reading during the final lap at Talladega. You're reading yeah. Harry Potter. And Unbelievable. Would... No, I read it. I do years. love. No. I've and listen, Harry Potter, <clears throat> all the Harry Potter, the potheads out there know that you can reread those books a thousand times and you'll pick up different things. They just get better and better the more you read them. So, I will say the audio book is great as well because it's got the british accent like i feel like i'm in the world and not just reading it myself so it's great my wife big audiobook um consumer can i ask a question if somebody asks you if you've read a book and you've listened to the audio tape what do you say yeah 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 no you can't say yes yeah, you go. Okay. People that are like, oh, I read, I read so many books, and they're just listening to audio books. You don't get the credit for reading that. I think you do. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'll say. All right, great segment by me, making making lemonade out of lemons with what's left up there. Wow, you do honorable mentions. No like honorable men. Yeah, no, just you just fucking did eighty seven honorable mentions. You guys have more. Keep going. What else you got? Borndale. Yeah, I do. Borndale. Actually, Daniel Hall. Already mentioned it. That's on the Freedom Trail. I get Daniel Hall too. I get them all, baby. Any Boston site, mine. No, Freedom Trail. I I meant to say this when you chose it. Nobody knows what it is. You always have to explain it, so it can't be that great of a field. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, that's the best. It's. I mean, it's the Trail of Freedom. Where see where Crispus Attucks got his fucking brains blown out and. Boston Master, boom. It doesn't even Black take you the to ground. the Tea Party, the Boston Tea Party. That's not so, on the Freedom Trail. Well, it's all the way down by the harbor. That The Boston Tea Party, like, crazy that that became such a big thing. That should be a holiday in Boston, like they have, like, Mardi Gras in <laughs> Louisiana. How about... um? Yeah, let's make it a holiday. How about the building of stuff? Like, didn't we go somewhere on field trips where you make something? Or no? Or am I what just wishing I had that experience? Like, you go there, you like milk a cow, like at uh, Old Surbridge Village, but you leave or like make rock candy. You you make something, you come away with it. Yeah, candles maybe. Do we I make candles like- somewhere? Dip in candles. I don't know, but like I, I remember Higgins Armory. Like it was cool because you went there and you could get the paper opener that was a sword, and like it was very, yeah. yeah. So Themed. I feel like any any field trip where you go somewhere and you create something and bring it back. Like Borndale was great because you made the the clay um, things that you then painted. So I made a snail, which was awesome. Yeah. Oh um, yeah. I feel that like snail. A, I think that snail yeah. still at Dad's house. I hope so because that thing's a legend. But anything like that where you go, you immerse yourself in the culture and experience, and you leave with a token of that. I feel like it was a great field trip for a day. Yeah, that's good. Uh, do you guys remember at Higgins Armory when they would like put have somebody put like chain mail and they'd like hit them with a sword? That's crazy. Yeah, you remember that? those are cool too. Yeah, live demonstrations on a field trip. Yeah, I'd Pretty love cool. to go. That's actually now that you say that. Dude, I don't think there's one around here, but the medieval times places where they joust. Oh yeah, I want to go to one of those things. That must be awesome. That's yeah, you I don't want to see that. Shit. That's like dangerous. But no, that's awesome. If jousting was a sport, you tell me that million dollar idea. They should bring jousting back. No, they shouldn't. That would people blow up. All the time. People would love that. Horses we would die. Safe, John. Horses yeah, die they, running in a circle on a track. And I know they still do that. They, but they wouldn't let us do it for the horses. Like UFC is basically jousting, but it's just. What do you mean they least. do? You could do they. Have you guys seen the videos of like the actual medieval fight stuff now, where like people are literally just smashing each other with battle axes and full suits of armor? I, th- I think I've seen that, and someone hit another guy in the head. Yeah, I'm like, how are people not dying? You could do you could do jousting with like fake horses. You could figure it out. I'd watch it. Yeah. But you get like you know, you get spears into the head. It's like. I'm telling you, you could do it. 
I any other watch. any other honorable mentions i mean i thought i had a lot of them until i mm. started thinking of them and i don't yeah field day not really a field trip field day was always cool that's all you got yeah i, I just always wanted one that was like how it's made but yeah. never got to experience that although i guess if you live near like maybe um in Cape Cod, if like if you went to the potato chip factory or something cool, yeah. Uh, but I feel like that was a big miss by our teachers was like how it's made. Yeah, we're like winter. I mean, I guess they had like ski club and stuff, but like I don't know, field trip to like a mountain or something. But any other any other honorable mentions? Okay, no. let's let's close this this episode out. So where we left the turtles, they were sweating up. Donnie and Kate went to the control room. Zach and the rest of the turtles down to the basement to the escape hatch. And they run down there. They run downstairs and they find the great Baldini and Don Tertelli. They're digging through the snow in the basement trying to find this grate. They can't see it because it's buried. And the turtles, they catch them in their escape. And the fight music plays, I believe. And a snowball fight breaks out. So they're just pelting each other with snow. Honestly, the turtles are kind of getting trounced with these snowballs getting pegged in the face. And back in the control room, Donnie and Caitlin have arrived, and they see that the rats have chewed the control board to shreds. Donnie's like, I don't know what to do. These are all ruined. What do we do? And Caitlin, the hero of the episode, is like, hey, maybe we can take this climate control computer or what's left of it and tie it to one of these other functioning ones and save the day that way. So they're working on that. As they're working on it, the snow coming out of the sprinklers turns to rain and it starts to melt the snow, but the wind is still going and that's blowing everybody around the basement. Zach in the commotion finds the great Boldini's magic trunk and he raids it with Mikey. Donnie and Caitlin finally figure out how to turn the weather off. Right as the great Baldini and Don Tertelli are about to escape through the sewer grate, Zach stops them, and he's got the great Baldini's wand, and he causes the Tortellini Emerald to levitate and fly off into the air. And then Mikey pulls off his top hat and releases doves, and they fly and flap around. They knock the great Baldini and Don Tertelli to the ground. And then he uses a grappling hook to tie them up. Then tell was this like actual magic with this fucking emerald? I think so. The emerald seemed real. What's going on here? I don't know. I thought at first it was <laughs> like a part of his heist and like a prop with a magnet or something. But yeah, I mean, he put it right back into the the box right i think so yeah yeah i believe so a little press to digitation for the group so they tie up the villains and then in walks what was his name flanagan oh flanagan oh shaughnessy shaughnessy and he walks into the basement and the turtles are like here take this tortoise and the emerald we're gonna make a break for it down in the sewer And then right behind O'Shaughnessy comes April, and she films him thanking the Teenage Mutant Ninja leprechauns. And the turtles see this on TV back in their lair. They're very speedy back home, turn the TV on instantly to get this live news feed. And when they hear leprechauns, Mikey gets up and does this little Irish jig on the coffee table. And that's how the episode ends. What a a great one. Yeah, great ending. I'm going to Ireland soon, so it's very fitting. I'll look for O'Shaughnessy and some leprechauns. Um, But episode ended better than I thought it was going to be at the onset. So that's a win in my book. Um, Yeah, not bad. Not great. I mean, coming off the stinker, we had... What was the last episode? The ter- the Terminator? Turtle Terminator. Yeah, that episode sucked. So this 
I think this one was. I like this episode. I think it was inflated because the last one was just such a pile of shit that this mm. one came out a little bit better. A lot of action, a lot of characters. No Krang and Shredder or Bebop or Rocksteady. So we got a different mix here of villains, which was a little bit nice. And I appreciated that. I get a little uh, update too because I was curious where I was going to get the rest of these Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles episodes. It's back on Apple TV. And you can buy every episode for 40 bucks. What? Wow, I got hosed (laughs) on my DVD set. (laughs) Clearly. I got hosed too. I got hosed on my Apple iTunes set. I paid $9.99 Nine ninety nine for every season, including the ones that had like this that have like forty seven yeah. and season one, which only had five. Damn. Oh, John's procrastination pays pays off in dividends. Pays dividends. I think it was. I think it's Nickelodeon too. That's I don't know. I think yeah, that might have been remastered or bucks. something. Yeah, they probably discount bargain just to get some publicity back. But anyway, we are going to go to Turtleisms now. Cowabunga! And I'm going to put the onus on John, because I know Andrew just watched the episode right before the show. I would imagine didn't have much time <laughs> to do Turtleisms, so we're going to let John uh, take the lead you'd, here. You'd be surprised, Chris, because uh, I do have some Turtleisms uh, written down. Wow. Mm. All right, Andrew, if you, I'll let you two hash out whoever wants to take the yeah. I'll take I'll take first stab. John's done the last couple. I'll take first stab. I definitely missed some because at some point I forgot I was doing turtleisms. But uh, I only had seven total. Okay, great. So I only had like twelve. So I'm gonna go in order of appearance. Please interrupt me. Mondo, amusing dude, by Michelangelo. Turtle power by everyone. Turtles on the lamb, said Mikey, which somebody knows where that saying comes from. Chris, probably you. On the lamb? That's like on the run. Yeah. I don't know what the origin of that is. Yeah, okay. Smell the Rat by Raphael. Freeze our shells off. Leo, snow with a chance of turtles. Michelangelo. Shell for brains by Don Tortelli. Bonsai. I think Raph said it. Couldn't really tell. Cowbunga, which Chris missed. We did get a cowabunga. When did they say cowabunga? When did I oh, miss yeah. that? Snowball fight. Snowball oh. fight. And then uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Leprechauns by Michelangelo. So, whoever said that. Yeah, I had um, Don Tertelli. I think he called he's, he called the Rat King a Rat Queen bandage face. Oh, you know what? He said... Um, no, because he's like, I'm the rat king. And then Tertelli's like, who is this, your rat queen? And he held a rat in his hand, and then he said, you bandage face. So, yeah. Yeah, that's a good, I mean, credit to Don Tertelli. That's a good own right there. Yeah. And then Sergeant O'Shaughnessy, he called the turtles Blarney Devils. He said something. Was that when he was behind him at the van? Yeah. Yeah. I thought there was like a Fliberty, Fliberty Blarney something. Blarney Devils. So, <clears throat> Yeah, that reminds me of the uh, Blarney Stone in Worcester. I feel like Blarney, what is Blarney? In, um, so the, the Blarney so. Stone is in Ireland. It's you hang upside down and kiss it for good luck or something like that. So look, maybe when you're in Ireland, Andrew, you can smoosh that bad boy. I know I'm trying to get culture as as best I can for my trip in like two days here. So we'll see. I will be bringing stickers. Two so days. Hopefully. You're on to Ireland two days. Yeah. On Sunday. Damn. Wow. Wow. We might do an international episode. Wait, Wait how long are you there for? Over there? Uh, I will be there until Thursday. So maybe not. Probably so not. here's, uh, you know, you're, I assume you're flying out of, you know, San Fran. No. To Ireland? Why would you go across the wrong? Yeah, I'm it's going just... I'm going east, baby. It's 20 well, hours. I was going to say, I was gonna say you, f- you would fly over the North Pole, basically, to get there. 
Taylor shortcut. Yeah, I think I think I'm actually on the way there. I go through Atlanta, so I don't know how far north that goes. Probably go over um, like Greenland that way. But and on then, the way back, I stop in Boston, so I think I will be over the North Pole possibly. Wow. No. But you know, tell Santa I said hello. The Boston to England is pretty directly across. Straight across. Basically. Well then, why, when would I fly over the North Pole? I'm saying if you were going San, if you were going West Coast to England, the shortest way would be up and over. Oh, yeah, yeah, but can't like, no. don't they follow winds and shit? I don't think they just go over the North Pole. They do. Look it up now. No, <laughs> no. flight tracker. Anyway, that is Turtleisms. Showcast Sportsbook is next, John. All right. So we are now in episode. We just completed 38. And we did have a cowabunga. I, 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 I will say here, I got a little excited when I saw that Donatello was driving the turtle van. Because I got my bets confused. I was like, oh. We want Donatello to drive, but in fact, we do not want Donatello to drive. We want Raphael to drive. It was also the Channel not. 6 News van, so it would not have counted had Raphael Oh, driven. good call. I didn't think about that. Uh, Krang not going topside. What the fuck, Krang? It's At all. <laughs> 38 episodes? You haven't been up there once? No, no. This is just from like episode... Well, whatever. <laughs> get out and stretch your legs. Get up. Yeah. Fuck, get up. We got another pants and no Vern this episode. So that's good for me. Which I meant to mention the cameraman, that guy from last episode seems to now be the new cameraman with the like aviator jacket or whatever you want to call it. Cause he made an appearance again. Yeah. He did. So that's the that, showcast sports. Book. That one hurts because currently there are one, two, Three, four, shoot. Should be five episodes left. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine episodes left. Yeah. Wow, we're almost at the end of season three. Yeah. Beautiful. Nine in, nine to go. Thank you, John, for that. We will now move to the villain power rankings. So we have one new villain for this episode, the great Boldini. As John slowly brings that up, any any <laughs> thoughts initially, Andrew, on where we might want to stick the GB? All right. <clears throat> Ooh, I like wow. that. Wow. Wow. <laughs> great. <laughs> All right, so we got the villain power ranking up on the screen. Head on over to YouTube to see it. Maybe our best visual segment. Great Boldini. Um, so what do I think about him? He was pretty good. But was he? <laughs> I, defer to, I defer to John. <laughs> Um, he was in the, well, do we know if he returns or not? I mean, he's oh, not going weird. to the rafters. I'll tell you that right now. No, I, I was going to say, is he a moose bush Because he's just like a little cup of coffee here. I just, yeah. A moose bush could be, let me, let me look it up. Chris, what are your thoughts? Well, I, yeah, I would say if to, I agree with John, if he doesn't come back, a moose bush I think outside of that, like either not bad, just disappointing, or yeah, I would put him there because he, yeah, he stole the, he stole the diamond, and then did nothing else. But he did. Did he emerald. even steal the diamond? It was or the emerald. It was DT. I mean, I guess yeah. He like he put the show on. He tied himself up. Yeah. 
So it says Great Boldini. Uh, that's it. Yeah, moves Boucher's ass now. Yep. Down he goes. So to a moose Bouche, the Great Boldini goes. Don Tertelli. Do we want to break him out of that stereotypes bracket? Did he do enough? Or is he just so Italian that he, he'll never leave? It's tough. He's really stereotypical. He is. The tickling thing has kind of become his other stereotype, so I don't know. Yeah, which like right? I don't yeah, I don't know where he would go because it's like, is he crazy? He's not insane in the membrane, I don't think. But he's turning like creepy almost. Yeah. I think he's okay to stay there for now. Yeah. I would agree. And then the Rat King. I love the category he's in, but I feel like he needs to be elevated somehow. I can make him bigger. (laughs) Yeah, I don't... It's a good question. I was thinking about that, too. Like, he... But he legitimately defines that. Like, he is so insane. And we moved into the front. That, uh... Oh yeah, we're re- we're also ordering in order of these, right? I like that he's bigger now. So maybe we do Don Tertelli that... moving to the front of that stereotypes line. That might yeah. be a little too technical. We, we do that. I don't know if that was a thing. I just I made it a thing in that episode I like a few it. few ago because it gives us something yeah. to at least debate on any given episode. Yeah. All right. Any other? I think those are the only villains, right? There was nobody else. No. Any other proposed changes? Anyone we want to dock for lack of lack of appearance? Anything like that? Not right now. All right. That thus concludes the villain power rankings. We will now move into the pizza poll results from last week. Because I have a great memory. Everyone knows that the question last week, which was answered by John and myself, was what is something that if you do at night makes you look like a psychopath? John, who answered first, said yard work, I believe. And I said running running in your normal clothes. Two pretty strong answers, I think, if I had to say. (laughs) Andrew, voting now, as always, last minute. (laughs) Absentee ballot. John, would you care to share the results? I would. But but before you do, I don't remember those answers from last episode, believe it or not. Like, I remember discussing him, but is that what we landed on? Yard work? And I thought it was like digging a hole or something. Isn't that what somebody I said? S- I said yard work, but I meant to say digging a hole. Yeah. And I uh, said running sure. in your normal clothes, and I should have said running in jeans. Okay. That's what it was. Because <laughs> I, I was like, yeah. I was like, it wasn't as cut and dry as just these two answers. There was way more debate. Yeah. But okay. Yeah. Perfect. Digging a hole. The winner with 36 votes. Of the 55 that were casted is yard work at night. Damn. So. Well, it's been a while since I've eaten a pizza. So yeah. Maybe I know I won't have the luck that you and Andrew have had. I'm probably <laughs> going to get like the worst thing that's on here. But as always, I will I will face the music. All right. So that brings us to pizza time. And I will share the screen. We had no new pizzas, as far as I was aware, for this episode. Yes, I did not. I did not get any either. Yeah. But all right. Quick recap of pizza power ups. If anybody wants to use one before we spin, Andrew, you have one combo slice, one party pizza, two odds makers. John, 
speaking of not using stickers, John's got three respins, two combo slices, a party pizza, and two odds makers. I have just the respin and the combo slice left. Hmm. John just getting fat on the hog, as they, as Chris has once yeah. said. It's you know I the reason I do it is because I don't want to poke the bear, if you will. And it's funny. It's funny you mentioned that though, because you also just said how you like to hoard your stickers from childhood, yeah. and you're hoarding your power ups. Yeah, I'm just yes. saying. So, Chris, anything you're hoping for? I'd like the fruit. Is that fruit cocktail pizza still on there? Yes. Yeah, I'd like a fruit. Rare, it's buried rare, somewhere, it's, I think. I don't know, but yeah, it's definitely still on there. I'll mm. take a fruit cocktail pizza. All right. Let's see if you landed. There's 72 entries total. And let me know when you want to spin. Spin now. It slows so much faster. Oh, we, just passed, we just passed fruit cocktail. So it's now on deep dish, mushroom, and white sauce. Ooh. Mm. I'll eat that all day. Deep, deep dish. dish. It's like I'm making my own pizza again. All right. And white sauce. And we will use a respin. Damn. Chris. So sad. John. All right. So Too bad. So sad. Has John ever used a piece of power up on Andrew? <laughs> A power up for so. good, you mean? Yeah. Chris. Or just not realize, on me. When I say don't poke the bear, it's we all know who the bear is. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Chris. You sure you have to throw a fastball right down the middle. Yeah, respin it again. Give me fruit <laughs> yeah. salad, baby. <laughs> you have to throw a fastball right down the middle. <laughs> yeah. Got fruit. This is actually hilarious because Chris was like could not believe that John got back to back takeout pepperoni pizza. Ground no, beef. Just my soft talk. Ground, ooh, ground beef. Yes, please. Mm. Ooh, that's tasty. <laughs> tasty. Yeah, and I'll throw down. Do I have a combo slice? You do. You have one. Oh, I only have one. Uh, so, what do I have? I have a combo slice, a party pizza, and two odds makers. Mm. All right. I'm gonna combo slice. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna combo slice you. Yeah, mm. ground beef's a little too boring, so I gotta throw something else on there. Reminds gonna, me that if Andrew, if Andrew didn't do that, I was gonna about to do it. Yeah, that's yeah. like that girl. That video, it's like smells like beef. You know what I'm talking about? No. It's like a little toddler. She's like, this smells like beef. It's funny. Sounds creepy. Ooh. I'll send it to you. What is that? Back Granola to the deep dish. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh no. <laughs> Talk about textural licorice and ground beef pizza. <laughs> <laughs> you can always respin yourself, buddy. Chris, try putting it in the microwave with a glass of water. No, you know what? <laughs> it's 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 time for a weird one. I'm gonna embrace this. I'm just gonna do it. I gotta write it down because I always forget. Here's what you do. You make ground beef granola. No, I'm gonna make this is granola, ground beef, ground, sure ground beef, granola, and licorice. This will be interesting because I'm doing whole thirty this month, basically. So mm. we're gonna get creative. We're gonna have to get creative with this pizza. That's right. Yeah. Maybe an oatmeal crust. Mm. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Yes. You can't do cheese or something? No dairy. Yeah. No dairy. There are options always. We live in a world where they can make anything out of anything. So, but it'll, it'll add a little element to this pizza. Mm. Right. Cauliflower well. crust. Yes. Awesome. I can't wait to eat that fucking shitbag <laughs> pizza. <laughs> Never never fails to give me the worst flavors ever. John's eating double pepperoni. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm eating licorice. <laughs> All 
All right. That brings us now into everyone's favorite description of a segment, the the poll question for next week. I will be reading the question because I just lost the pizza wheel challenge. Andrew will be choosing first because he ate, as we all saw in his cyber bite earlier this episode, (laughs) Andrew, Andrew ate pizza this week. And John will choose second because he won the poll this week. Yes, he did. So, And there are a total of 37 questions. 37 questions. And I heard Chris say 37 this week, so now I will do the random number generator because I actually didn't last week. And I was like, why is he taking so long? So 34, the random number is 20, 20. Question 20. What will always be cool no matter what? Mm. What will always be cool no matter what? Ooh. Mm. Can I delete this, that from this, the list? John, you got that? Yeah. Are you going to leave it, it there? No, you could, you, I got it. What will always be cool no matter what? Wow. There's so many ways you could go here. I mean, but what does my heart say? I'm just going to say rock and roll, baby. Oh, rock and roll. Uh, I mean, is it a good answer? I don't know. I feel like classic rock and roll music, you know, still alive um, yep. and i yeah i feel like music in general is hard to hard to kill so it's a safe it's a safe guess but what's the rationale there honestly couldn't tell you i don't even really know who classic like rock and roll is is it the beatles i guess or like the rolling stone and that sort of thing or beatles a different would be yeah rock and roll yeah. rock and roll yeah so well i guess like, I feel like that's safe. Right? I feel like that's the started Rock and Stone. Rock and roll, rock and roll, yeah. Andrew, I, yeah. I hate to just absolutely shit all over your answer and pick. I'm about to rock your world right now. Are you ready for my answer? What will always yeah. be cool no matter what? I know what John's going to do. A backwards hat. Ooh. <laughs> Holding Caulfield up in this bitch. Yeah. Nice. I. Yeah. I mean. I was that it was going to be like the thumbs up where I'm trying to think of things that cool people do. So like, what do I do every day? Like the phone's like, Hey, yeah. yeah like hey, a leather jacket. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah, I know. I thought about that. Cause that ran through my head too. Like the fawns and being cool, but leather, I don't know if leather has always been cool on guys. Top flying a plane. Top gun. Yeah. Flying a plane. Pretty cool. <laughs> But I think but like I went, a jumbo would say like not as cool. It has to be a yeah. smaller type. Lighter, point. Yeah. You know, the better answer there is like, you know, a car, like muscle cars or something. Oh, like a, a hot cool. broad standing next to you on the <laughs> car is fucking cool. <laughs> yeah. I will, John, the only thing, a backwards hat, like a backwards fitted hat isn't always cool. Yeah, it's going to be a backwards trucker cap. Yeah, yeah, I think it's how is it? Back, it's cool. You need it. You need hair. Yeah, and yeah. how is it that trucker hats like became cool again when they weren't cool at all? Remember when FlexFit came out and like everyone was like, yeah. "Oh, you have a, a clasp on your hat. Like, why the fuck would you ever wear that?" And now yeah. I feel like it's gone opposite, where fitted hats. It'll go back. Like, That's how fashion you know what, works, baby. So, you know what the cool? You know what the cool hats are in my mind. Are the ones that have the rope that goes across the brim? Those are like the cheap, yeah, like styrofoam trucker hats. Those are not back trucker, well. no, yeah. just oh, not the phone. oh, five panel hats or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Here's my yes. answer. Thanks for asking, everyone. Running fast, always cool. If somebody's fast, never gets old, ever. Hmm. Think about it, John. Usain Bolt, cool. All the fastest people in the world, cool. Mm. 
I don't know. When you're a kid on the playground, everyone knew who the fastest kid was. And he was the coolest. Or she was the coolest. What about uh, hitting a home run? Yeah, I was oh. going to say slam dunk. Dingers, baby? Like fucking dingers. Yeah. Dingers. Like touching- yeah, dingers. <laughs> <laughs> I just had this conversation. Who the fuck was I? Oh, I was talking about shout out to Carl. Um, I was just talking talking about we were talking about sports or something and i was like yeah dingers will always be fucking awesome and i didn't even think about it for this answer damn it touching touching net jumping up and touching the net yeah dunks i mean dunks yeah Yeah, dunks in the backboard yeah Yeah. swap the backboard might be cooler than dunking to be honest (laughs) yeah and one of the coolest things i've ever seen still to this day i was never able to do was carmelo anthony i watched him dunk one time where he jumped up and he took the ball and just tapped, tapped it against the backboard. the backboard and then dunked. And I was like, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen. It's so fucking hard. It's impossible yeah. to do. Like, you actually have to float in the air. But dunks are cool. Um, in the back pass, always cool. Ooh. Dribbling, dribbling between your legs, cool. Yeah, there's a lot of cool things in sports, like throwing like a Hail Mary or like a kick return for a touchdown. Like, that stuff. A cool diving about. catch. Yeah. yeah. Kick flip, Still doing a home. kick flip. I'd fucking Ooh. kill someone to kick flip. Never could do it. Skateboarding in general, yeah, I cool. Anything you do on a skateboard looks cool. Grinding. Yeah, but what about non non sports? Like, what's cool? Like, I don't know. I Acing think that's a test a isn't that cool, right? Rod. Perfect score. Um, yo yo. Is yo yo yeah. cool? I think so. Just waiting against Ooh. the lamppost, yo yoing. You know what I think is cool is when you get the exact even dollar amount when you're pumping gas. John wouldn't yeah. know about that. I do you remember? Paying in cash, cool. Feels cool. Yeah, taking out a fat stack of bills and just flipping through. Yeah. Having yeah. exact change. Change is not cool. Carrying change buying, is not cool. Buying, yeah, definitely not. If you're walking around late, jingling yeah. change in your pockets, super lame. Yeah, very having lame. too many keys. The more keys you have, the less cool yeah. you are. Having one key is the coolest. Unless you're thing a you janitor. Yeah. Because when you pull out that big <laughs> ring. <laughs> yeah. There's yeah. A certain you need point like a hula hoop of keys. Yeah. Just... <laughs> At some point, you go from being super lame to super cool. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody's and ever the answer is like, when you're. At- yeah, let's change. Let's have one universal lock. We need a different lock and key for every single room in a building. Yeah. What about this? Uh, oh, I just forgot it. It was good though. <laughs> oh, those combs, the combs that look like switchblades. <laughs> oh, that's <laughs> about yeah. <laughs> All of our cool, cool things come from the movie Grease. Grease, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Having really thick hair. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, there are cool things, girl, right? Summer crush. Yeah. Now, playing guitar, I mean, playing in a band is always cool. Like, that's yeah. one that's actually legit. Fuck, we forgot that one. Um, Moonwalking will always be yeah. cool. <laughs> dancing, yeah. Being a good dancer is cool. Like, or da- like break dancing. I think it depends on the kind cool. of dance, though. Like, is tap dancing cool? Yeah. Remember when John yeah. was into tap dancing? There was like a was guy on TV. TV. Yeah, you were a tap guy. We had tap shoes. Or like you were like I I do one of that. Mom would remember this. John had like fancy shoes he would tap dance in the living room with. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I remember it was like a guy on TV. Quoting your favorite movie. That's pretty cool. Quoting poetry, like I don't know how people do that. That's kind of cool, though. Yeah, lots of cool stuff. What did I say again? Uh, rock, rock and roll. And roll. I mean, and the first backwards hat. That's a pretty good poll. Yeah, that it's, is pretty like, good. Those, those, are, are, two those very, are two very cool things. Yeah, yeah. classically cool. But All right, that that we'll see. We're off to a rocky start. I didn't know how that one was going to go. It ended up pretty good. So well done. <laughs> That's the pizza poll for the week. Uh, we now go to the outro. Does anybody have anything? Andrew, we'll start I with do. you since John oh, went first. Oh, I do. 
I've got some new pelotas, as they call them. Whoa, Whoa are those Crocs? What are those? These are those called Kane's footwear. They are like Crocs. They look like Yeezys, as people have told me. My camera's not going to focus. But they're basically more athletic-looking Crocs. Because, number one, Crocs don't come in my size. So, And when they do, they're only in like one color. So that, that's a shame. And number two, I've seen all these all over Instagram. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to give it a try. I wore them for the last three days all day being in the OR. They're phenomenal. So oh. highly recommend them. They're comfortable. They're probably the same thing as Crocs, honestly. But Crocs these the ones fit, fit my feet. So It's wild that they don't make a Croc big enough for your foot. That's crazy. A Croc is just like a molded. It's just foam. How do they not? Yeah, I know. I'm the giblets. Here's the Gib- thing. Giblets. <laughs> giblets. Oh, no, gibbets. <laughs> giblets are coming to Turkey. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what are we talking about? Turkeys, like gizzards. Uh, yeah, gibbets. Um, no, what was I going to say? Uh, oh, yeah. That's what bothers me. Allbirds is a good example. John's favorite shoe wear. Those are awesome. So a lot of footwear companies only make the sweet spot, which is like size whatever, like, you know, nine through 13 or something, which I'm cool with whatever you want to discriminate, at least you're equally discriminating. But now all birds extended their, their sizes are smaller, but they're still ignoring the people with bigger feet. So I'm selling. Yeah. And you just has to wear basketball shoes around everywhere. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's a, it's a hundred percent a first world problem being like tall or having big feet. It sucks. Like clothing, it bothers me. It bothers me. Yeah. Everything should be fitted in custom design. It's really what it Yeah, shoes, about. I've never had to worry. I'm right, I'm gonna write in the sweet spot on shoes. I've, everything is always available in my shoe size. It's mm-hmm. great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, honestly, the worst feeling ever is when you're like, Oh, these are awesome shoes. I can't wait to buy them. Oh, wait, they don't come in my size again. Like deflating. Because you all you have is the basic shit. It's like black ones or white ones. Vans are a good example. I like wearing Vans now. Like they're nice because they're Ooh, Vans. Vans. Wow. Vans, yeah. Like they do wide. Actually, a lot of people, uh, because there's like a zero drop on them, like them for physical activity. But lo and behold, in a 15, they, they're only in black or white, essentially. What does so, that mean, just, zero drop? But like toe to heel, the actual vertical distance from where your heel sits to where your toe sits. Oh, yeah. Andrew, going back to his skateboarding days with the Vans. Yeah. He might, he might kick right. flip on us right now. <laughs> I'll, heel, I'll heel flip on your ass. I, I could never kick flip. Isn't a kick flip easier than a heel flip? I don't even know what the difference is. I thought you learned to ollie, and then a kick flip is like trick number two. I could never do it. So I was a heel flip machine. You know what's cool, like skating, where you're like you're not vert sk- inline skate, not vert. What's the opposite? Street skating. Yeah, where you're just like doing pop shove and like all these little foot tricks close to the ground. Mm. That's the real cool skating. Yeah, street skating is where it's at. Shout out Tony Hawk Pro Skater. Yeah. All right, John, you go now. Yeah, so I came across a little something that piqued my brain, and I'm. I'm going to ask you guys this question and I'm going to see if you can answer it. There are three words in the English language that start with the letters DW. Can you name, tell me those three words? Dweeb. Dweeb does not count. That's slang. Dweeb doesn't, uh, dwell or dwelt. Are those, do those count dwell. as one or two? That counts as well. Yeah. Dwell. Dwell. Dwindle. Ooh, dwindle. Dwell, dwindle. Dwarf. Ooh, Chris gets Holy all three. Shit. I didn't do anything Damn. there except, <laughs> I mean, I started off hot, but I didn't know dweeb wasn't a real word. Yeah, I was dweeb, not a word. That's a word. I don't think it is. But I mean, so folk, if, if that counts, then there's four, but yeah. Nice. Fuck, crush that. Dwindle, Get that out of my face. Dwell and dwarf. Very nice. I just have to say that was impressive, but I also chose olives on my salad thinking they were black. 
because oh. why wouldn't they be? And they're fucking green. Green Ugh. the worst ones. Did you get a Greek salad? Just, no, I just I did a build your own, but disappointed. You know what I've been anyway. putting in my salads lately? Avocado. Strawberries. No, avocado. Great salad additive. Chris, you're like Chris. Where have you been? Behind? Yeah, yeah. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> he talked about <laughs> avocado. That's avocados. Like... Yeah, I didn't say I didn't say it was revolutionary. It's good. Chickpeas, great in there. I okay. have them in here. Yeah, you gotta get to the West Coast, Chris. Put some on toast. You'll fucking blow your brains up. I, okay. I did that for a while. I burned Don't... myself out on avocado toast. And Careful, eggs. you might lose all your money and not be able to buy a home if you buy too much avocado yeah. toast. <laughs> <laughs> As a true millennial, only one. Avocado toast. You know what I didn't get into, though? The everything bagel seasoning? Hell yeah. Oh, with it tastes terrible. It tastes avocado like Avocado toast, toast with, with some sr- sriracha? Yeah. yeah, sriracha, yeah. A little, a little runny egg on top, a little sriracha. But the for some reason, maybe I just got like a bad one, but it ruined the taste when I put the everything bagel seasoning on it. I'll do. I'll throw it on there. I actually think I'm not a big fan of everything flavor. I really am not. However, when it comes to bagels, <laughs> like <we> question you. <laughs> yeah, I really am not. But when it comes to bagels, why do people love everything bagels so much? I love it's just it like burns. All the shit burns on it. That's what I'm saying. It's them. like it. It basically tastes like burnt garlic always, and like it's crunchy. It's falling off. It's getting stuck in your teeth. Yet. Yeah. Universally, it's probably the most popular bagel, right? Why isn't it in the bagel? Why is the seasoning always on top? Well, so that's why I was going to talk about the seasoning is because I actually, if I want everything, I'll just use a plain bagel with cream cheese and I'll sprinkle that on the inside, like you just said, like yeah. on the part where it sticks instead of falls off. Yeah. And the thing with everything bagels is if you don't eat it within like an hour, it just, it like rehydrates and becomes very sticky. Yeah. And it also, like, if you ever, you know, if you're a good coworker and you maybe you're going into work and you pick up some bagels for the the office, they make sure to segregate the everything bagel from the rest of them so it doesn't stink up all the, the rest of the bag. Yeah, it should. A fresh Too bagel, aromatic. though. Too fragrant. Oh, a New York, a fresh New York bagel. Oh, it's a game changer. It's hard to go back to other bagels. It's one of the few things where they actually. The hype lives up to to the product. Mm. I'm I'm buying I'm buying bagels from New York. My wife still talks about we walked into this hole in the wall for a breakfast sandwich one time. The best breakfast sandwich she ever had because it was on a bagel, New York bagel. Yeah. And every time we've gone back, she's like, "We need to find that." I'm like, "You know how hard that will be." Like there's literally a million bagel places in New York. Yeah, but the thing too is like, a, I we grew up toast. You always toast the bagel. The New York bagel, you don't toast. Fresh, a little schmear of cream cheese. They get it's like a whole different game down there in the bagel bagel world. We were eating fucking frozen Wenders bagels in the toast. Frozen that came bagels, like, unbelievable. I don't yeah. freeze my bread. Straight, well, freezing bread is the way to go. No, I freeze my bread. I don't freeze my bagel. Yeah, your bread freezers. You guys are bread freezers. Yeah, when you go to Costco, you have to stock yeah. up, buddy. It's never the same. You can't, you can't undo no, the freeze. I think bread, bread can be. Depends how long you leave it frozen for. Like, we don't leave ours for months, but bagels, they got to be fresh. Or at least not frozen. I don't know what Those, it is about bagels, but bagels and um, English muffins don't taste the same, in my opinion. Yeah. Those bagels, I walk by do. them in the freezer section sometimes. They're just like in the bin on the bottom. They are not even have a shelf. And they're always yeah. next to that canned frozen juice. What is that juice? It's just concentrate, frozen concentrate. You're supposed to mix with yeah. water. It's bad. Dad used to buy. We used to buy that every once in a while. It's cheap, yeah, because they were like a quarter. Yeah, you could get four for a dollar, and like Tina's burritos. Yeah. All that stuff is Tina's. like, yeah, yeah, the, the murderous row of 
Recounter Popeye, Tina's burritos, that juice, Owender's bagels, Mama Recounter pizza. Razzleberry pie. Check it out. Razzleberry? Yeah. They make non pot pies. Yeah. Recounter makes a great razzleberry. You throw it in the oven for like a couple hours and you gotta let it sit for like half a day for all it to like settle. And then you can eat it. What's a razzleberry? It's like, you know, fruit. <laughs> All right. It's good, though. Maybe I'll, if we're not there, eat a raspberry pie. Call in the turtle comp. We have a voicemail. Tell us how it tastes. While you're eating it. Yeah. Or maybe give us a cyber bite. Pizza, raspberry pie. What do they call that? Muck, mukbang? Yeah. Mukbang us, baby. <laughs> <laughs> mukbang i haven't heard that one i think that's it i think that has to be a thing though yeah we'll throw it on on a talk and uh as long as it's still allowed in the united states which could be you know change any day now apparently again or maybe yeah that's yeah, fake news but thanks for uh a great episode chris appreciate it yeah you know it feels good to be back it feels like a while since i was in the driver's seat mm. i will now hand the keys over to andrew for I forget the name of the next episode coming up, but I'm sure it'll be a good one. Yes, it is called The Missing Map. I think. The Missing Map, which, wow, we talked about the map we buried before in the sand pile. Mm, so I forget what episode that was. Go back and listen to it. With that being said, I bring this episode to a close. Cowabunga, bitches. See you later. <laughs> Cowabunga. Cowabunga. Cowabunga.